Good evening, everybody. And okay. what is that? Bye. Okay, so gun is out. Welcome, everybody. To we can all sell it now. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> welcome. Oh, he's seeing secrets. Hello there. Hey, um, Gunnar, could you grab me the You've remote? seen everything. Cool. You I actually still, have seen it. I actually it. still need it because it's going to be loud. That was a random page. It wasn't It wasn't anything. Welcome, everybody, um, to Dungeons & Dragons, uh, Fate's Grip, Session 59, The Secrets of Kenneth. Um, we're just getting our little television ready to go. Uh, Aeoncraft, welcome, hello. Fans. And we are together. We are together, finally. Um, so... I'm super, super happy about that. That's the first shout out. I miss everybody's faces here. So. Yeah, sorry that um, it took this long for us to actually pay attention. How long has it been? Four months? It's been about four That's months. Not no, it has not. No, about three four weeks. Four months. We what? It was three sessions, right? Four three sessions. Three mm -hmm. sessions? Yeah. Yeah. Almost a month. In between that, thankfully, uh, we had a, um, a, an Amara do some, uh, uh, do some streaming of her own. <laughs> pretty, pretty awesome. Um, doing The Last of Us. Um, and Aeoncraft. Aeoncraft, hello. Little does Amara know I was watching the whole time. Were you um, actually? Yeah. That's so upsetting. <laughs> there was like a whole comment that I made there. I was like, fuck, I hope Mikhail is not watching. That would be really embarrassing. Why? Yep, I was there. Because um, I, like, I idolize Mikhail. Anyway, um, I think I said that about four times during that stream too. She didn't. I did. But check it out. But check out. Aeoncraft, pack me up. Check out the, um, hey, Kahoo. Uh, NBCDM. NBCDM, hello. Oh, look how handsome Michaela looks up there. Lol. Oh, I need yeah, a haircut. Oh, yeah, we have to stream up for so the first time. I need a haircut. You guys haven't seen this up here before, No, have never. You? Actually. So we have the stream going in the background now, so we can all see the comments. This actually mm -hmm. looks really good, the lighting. This yeah. Oh, oh, also, lighting? my TV is just really nice. Actually, it's that's true. Nice TV. That's true. But um, anyway. Thank you, Aeoncraft. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I've got something. Um, everybody here <laughs> that I'm aware of, and correct me if I'm wrong, is going You're to be wrong. a part of, true, Jasper's Game Day mm. in Australia. Yay! So um, please, uh, and, and this is all thanks to... Meeples and Dragons, uh, amazing friends of ours um, and organ uh, organizers of this for the Australian portion. Uh, please uh, go and um, do good for charity as a first, but if you also want to watch us, uh, everybody here are, I think, uh, some players and characters in the one shot. I'll be DMing a session. Um, so that'll be I'll really. I'll be tuning in and absolutely donating so that I can yeah. create chaos in that session. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Uh, oh dear. Um, so do that. Uh, and that's that's my shout out. Any, any, any... Can I tack on to that? Yeah, please tack on. Um, I think, like you already mentioned, Meeples and Dragons, but seeing the sheer amount of work that went into um, getting this up and running in Australia. This is the first time this is happening in Australia. Mm. So really, really cool. Um, huge testament to the hard work that they've done. Amazing cast of people involved in this. Um, cannot wait. Thank you. If you didn't, <laughs> aside from Gunnar, now, um, if you didn't win a seat, then that's okay. Um, thank you for bidding. Um, but you can donate in each session. So each session will have their own tier of rewards based on donations um, that can actually help you influence the game for advantage, disadvantage, etc. Um, so check it out. If you want to see me roll worse, you can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Die with level oh. one. <laughs> wow. um, you can actually impose a disadvantage on Ooh. for like 25 points, I think. It's, it's yeah. ridiculous. It's... It's basically my worst nightmare, or how I roll normally. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is your worst nightmare. Just as game week um, kicks off very, very shortly. Um, May. Like, first week of May. 3rd of May. 3rd of May it kicks off in yeah, Australia. I believe so. Yeah, you're like first up, aren't you? I'll be, I think, probably the 3rd. Yeah, but you're first day. First day. Yeah. Like first day. First day. Ah, no, no, it's a Monday. Um... <laughs> Awesome. Thank Speaking you. Speaking of streaming, um, if you want to tune in to this channel tomorrow at 6.45, um, since hey, apparently yeah. NVCDM and Aeoncraft prefer watching me over this stream, um, <laughs> I will <laughs> I will absolutely be streaming um, more of The Last of Us 2 tomorrow. Come hang out with me um, and watch hey, me fall. Hey, Calamity. Watch Welcome. me fall off high, high objects. It was pretty funny to watch. Um, I expected it. And get scared. It. 
That was pretty mm-hmm. cool. I expected it heavily. I'm really bad. You would understand <laughs> this game. I can't jump it's off things. It's an amazing game. It's a great game, but yeah. I always fall off things anyway. And like horses. <laughs> jump falls only, mm-hmm. please. <laughs> um, sweet. Uh, Exclamity, thank you so much. That's really kind of you. <laughs> but, please, but also look at Last of Us if, if you like the game too. And, and, um, um, like and if Amara there's any somewhat. other content that you guys want to see from us, let us know so that we can make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, please comment uh, about any yeah, any games you want to supply. Or... If you want like Michaela to do a dance party every Friday night, we can make that happen. I've got a tutu. Um, <laughs> so... The other thing as well is, um, no, I got nothing. What else does anyone have to, to talk about? Anything else you want to shout out? Uh, I think maybe next week. Yeah, just That's, tease everyone. Is it just up? tease everyone. Uh, no, unfortunately we ran out of time to get it sorted for tonight's session, but uh, a little bit of artwork for Dravago will be coming, so keep an eye out on the Twitter and uh, in the overlay next week. Yeah, we got some awesome stuff. Yes. yes. Very, very happy with it. So uh, give the artist details and everything like that when you guys can see it. But uh, yeah, check out the Twitter and that'll be going up soon. Actually, that's amazing. Yeah, you did have um, uh, a sneak peek and it was freaking awesome. (laughs) Um, Anyone else? Um, I'd just like to say it's been really nice having you with us. Um, Mm. And I enjoy this. That's what the artwork's for, for a Dravago's in memoriam oh, right. for the yes. uh, end of oh, campaign. Oh, now I understand what that... Jo- I was like, is it because of the background? Anyway. <laughs> Good. Good. It's been nice. <laughs> Can't wait to see which chaotic character you bring next. <laughs> bring back dance. Who's more dance? characters than we have? Bring back dance. <laughs> Very true. Bring back dance. <laughs> okay. Well, um, if that's, Ooh, if that's what we've got... Travago isn't allowed to die, apparently. Oh, okay. <laughs> For at least three more episodes. Noted. Thank you. Um, three. Yep, that that, make, that works, actually. Um, <laughs> uh, awesome. He'll so, just alternate between you and I. Exactly. Yeah, I am going to recap, uh, because that's what I love doing that for, for everybody. For me, actually. I, I do it for me. Uh, more, than ever, more than anybody. Um, cool. So, let's head into it and recap session 58. Where am I? I'm not nowhere near You're what right. that was. I know, I, I am here. That is very true. Ah, here we go. So. Oh my god, Tabletop Troops, they're here again from Hello. Japan. Hello, thank Welcome you so much, back. Tabletop. Thanks for joining us again. Hope Hello. Japan is treating you well. Um, very clean there. Um, <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It is. It's very clean there. It is not wrong. Anyway, <laughs> so it is. let's let's bring it in. Um, <clears throat> you all escaped the magic of the quarry, Ceribia, the warden of the temple of Ilyanar, and met again with Torix, the golden dwarf, still calling this place home. <clears throat> You saw Thorum wrap the remains of his brethren of the Temple of Edo in the religious robes and called for the master of the temple to retrieve the deceased guards. They came and took them away, while a crowd of people collected around the area, seeing the building of Ilyanar turn dark and damage appeared in the building, though not dangerous. A goblin of the house Kenneth there stood in awe of Travago and giving information that Merrick's the second, the lesser, may be nearby, though elusive. Ok Raz seemed to share a fascination for the making of you and uh, the forge of your kind and sent you on your way to Merrick's location. Lower Tavix Landing, Watermelon Lane. <laughs> You discussed your next steps, parting ways, collecting goods and seeing Orlix's tavern refreshed, renaming it the Five's Rest. Passing thugs and seeing Orlix's older brother regaling stories of you. And Gunnar and Dravago heading back to the Morgrave University to find more information on the Warforged and House Kenneth. But as you left, Gunnar being interrupted by Obradin who once again spoke to you 
and you inadvertently blasted the room around you with some sort of psionic power, causing everyone to vanish. Dravago, <laughs> pardon? Dravago, you finding yourself amiss with simply air surrounding you, floating. Cute. And that's where we left off. So, Dravago, as you, as you adjust your eyes, looking around, it's almost like someone has lifted you and you're sort of caught in, in an uncomfortable pose, horizontal. And as you try and right yourself, the air shifts around you and you spin, but then you then go back onto your back looking up, but it's disorientating. It's almost like you're looking down at the same time. You don't know which way is what. As back in the room, Gunner, you hear banishment. <clears throat> A part of my role, Gunner, Cha. I am attempting something new, enhancement. I think it is permanent. I'm not sure. This is really the power of psionics. Control it. You will find nothing in this in these books around you worth your time. You need to find me. Learn from me. This is how you will find your power. Use your experiences and, and seek the answers inside. A test for you then. Oppose me. Bring him back. Bring them back. Is, is Kips with me still? Kips is still with you. Really? Looking around with your robe of eyes? No. not just me that allows this passage of strength. Your mind is open. Too open. You must learn to close it. You must learn to control more. The test here, Char, is to not allow me in. Reverse what I have done. Um, <clears throat> I will try and cast um, scrying if I can on Travago. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Are you trying to oppose as you feel yourself almost like someone is looking? from over your shoulder, from behind you. It's an unnatural feeling. For the first time you feel nothing and then suddenly something almost at the corner of your eye. And I've noticed nothing else, just air. Just air. I would hope that this would be one of my companions trying to find me so I'd let it happen. Okay. I'll just roll something very quickly. 
<laughs> okay. And as you cast scrying, immediately you see with this shimmering ball just beyond this cloudiness <clears throat> having a grey green tinge of sky with small wisps of cloud rushing past. You see Dravago floating aimlessly. <laughs> it's you don't feel like you're moving, Dravago, however, however. Although the, there is a, a wind that's picking up around you. You seem to be the still form in this environment. Just uh, give a heavy sigh, slump of the shoulders. You know I should have gone to the pub with the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> and then immediately kind of spring back up and there's nothing I can do. So he'd do his best to just relax and go with the flow. Okay. Where does the flow take you? Where is he? You sent him. How did you do this? You did. I couldn't have done it without you. And gonna make a an arcana check for me as you watch the environment as well as Dravago. Natural training plus arcana. Five. You look around for a moment through the through the magic and immediately recognize this from the plentiful reading you do as the elemental plane of air. A portion of it. A lot of the environments that are in this uh, elemental plane don't look like this. This is a just basically a different a different area than you might be used to, where clear skies uh, have you been able to see into the horizon. But here is diminished in how far you can see. It's just a different different part of it. Okay. Um, I, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to... I can't reach someone on a different plane. Close your eyes. Think about a spell that you have cast similar to this before. Bring that spell to the foray. Bring it forward into your mind. And as you, as you think, as Gunnar, do you recall a spell similar to the spell banishment or banishment as it is to send someone else I, I, I know that you can send someone but I don't know how to bring them back you said I cast this spell right? you did well that means I have to maintain my concentration to keep them there Correct. I'll just will him back. Okay. Make me an intelligence check, please. <laughs> you dumb. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's two weeks in a row I've been able to make that joke. Nine? Okay. Dravago, all of a sudden, you feel yourself for the first time since arriving here, only mere seconds, being pulled back as though a, 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 a giant invisible hand has grabbed you, but then you stop and you don't feel that rush anymore and you're simply floating again. <laughs> and you almost heard a familiar sound of people, almost like an echo from where you were just moments before, but then it disappeared. And in your head, Gunnar Oberdin says, that is why you must come to me. Um, I'm going to try and 
try to push him out of my mind and turn to Kips. Um, how many people were here before? Oh, I must say, uh, uh, 12. Uh, I counted 12, including uh, Dravago and, and Liberth. And Ankrivrith. Yes. I'm so going to try again. This ten other students. Keeping all 12 in my mind. Um, but this time I'm going to, without closing my eyes, I'm going to try and reach out with my hands and as if I'm pulling the air apart in front of me. Okay. <clears throat> I need you. I need you to make me a wisdom check this time, please. Check. Yes, please. That's a seven. A seven? Okay. And in your mind you hear, call him. Speak his name. Have him return to you. Speak all of their names. I don't know all of their names. Speak of Dravaga and Livereth. Speak their names and call them back. Trivago, come back. As you Krivith, come back. continue to m- use that motion. Let me just roll something in my end. But what are you rolling? Secrets. Secret check. <laughs> as you... Roll for secrets. As you... Tear your hands apart. You watch as finally, within this space between your hands, is not this room, but what you're seeing through this scrying ball, and you can see through it like a similar looking keyhole that entered into the Cory home. That you, that you noticed you see through this space into the elemental plane of air and you notice that Dravago is close. Dravago, you suddenly hear the word from Gunnar. Dravago, come back. Just fluster around and try <laughs> to look to see where that's coming from. Make a dexterity check. It's very airy up here. <laughs> Uh, it's a four. A four? As you flail around trying to trying to gain some purchase, you do look around and you notice that, that in the middle of this emptiness, there is this room again. But you just can't get close to it. You're probably about three meters away from it. And you, and you notice each other. How large is the, this, this space, this gap? About a meter. A meter opened. Just him, no one else. At the moment, yeah. Come back! Um, can Eric attempt to fly with his little propeller mm-hmm. and hold on to some hemp and rope that I have on me to mm-hmm. get towards this, uh, this room? Sure. Um, is there, are there, there are stats for that yeah, creature isn't uh, there. I just have to bring... Just need you to make me uh, an athletics check for it. Uh, he doesn't have Use that. dexterity. Yeah. Use dexterity. There you go. He is quite dexterous in the air and he has a 20. A 20, all right. With the instruction, the rope is tied around and it flies through. Gunny, you see that this metallic small spider just flies in with this rope on uh, uh, held in its grasp in its metal legs and you you have it in your in your reach and i'll be grabbing onto the right okay i'll grab it mm-hmm. and i'll help pull if i can make a strength check <laughs> um if you want to oh. you're, you're seeing that that's 
that that's occurring if you wanted to assist? No, but it's a lot higher than I've been rolling. Um, it's a 15 total. A 15? A negative 2. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'd, given what happened when I was trying to move before, I'll just be firing my legs like a kindergartner with a keyboard, <laughs> <laughs> trying okay. to get through the air. And you feel yourself being pulled towards this this gap, and as you get closer and closer, you feel the wind change. It's no longer a cold environment, but this warmness that the, that the um, that the room gave, and you actually do feel as you put your hand through that there is solid solidity where this opening is and gonna you pull this and the last thing you hear once more from Oberdin is progress and you then suddenly feel this claw around your ankle and you look back and see Krivereth um, held <laughs> on as well and you both get pulled into this space back into the Morgrave University and at once with a flash of white light the space closes and you slam into a table and a chair and roll onto the floor with Krivereth just sprawled with you as well it's uh, cold scales just just rubbing up against your arm and then, and then floating off. It flutters or, and, and, and spreads its wings in a moment and lifts off and goes onto the top of um, one of the library shelves. Hey, buddy. It's a nice little trick. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that. <laughs> How long have you been able to do that? I, I, I don't know. I guess I'm in it. Maybe uh, next time you can send me somewhere with a better view. The uh, elemental plane's pretty uh, pretty boring. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just give him a pat on the shoulder. Mm. Uh, as I do, um, I'll get Eric Eric to try and as stealthily as possible Kill just climb, climb climb off my arm yep and uh move so he's touching gunner okay but maybe um i've seen kips spend a bit of time up around his neck so if he can kind of maybe sneak down lower on the body and um yeah try to do that as stealthy as possible make a stealth check for it uh and you can make me an opposing perception check if that's okay um, tabletop troops doesn't want us to interrupt, but I'm going to because this is just so fucking sweet. Um, they just said, "Don't let me interrupt," but I told my D and D party members about you, and hopefully they stop by. Thank That's just so, so much. sweet. That's really like, that is awesome. oh. worth stopping for. Thank you very, very I much. I love that. That's so cute. It's very kind. Um, oh, it's gonna plus four. Uh, so that's a twenty versus a uh, perception. <laughs> 21 you don't notice it immediately but at, you do feel you didn't notice this creature coming towards you but the slightest touch at your side and you look down just instinctively and see this small metallic spidery type of creature that's just up against you just gently okay and the room uh, shall we continue on what we were planning to do? Yeah, yes. Yes, we need to go. Where are we going again? Oh, the, the tavern. The tavern. Uh, I believe uh, Rook said an acquaintance of his used to run it. Yes. Uh, I think maybe uh, given with everything that's been happening, we should skip uh, any stops on the way. Oh, I thought we were going straight there. Yeah. Uh, shall we fly? <laughs> yes. <Ooh. laughs> uh, and I'll try and stay behind Gunner yep. as we're going. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Lead the way. I'm not uh, familiar with this tavern. Um, 
I'm going to crack out my book because I don't remember where it is. <laughs> That's okay. Um, you, you remember it's in the cogs. Uh, and you're looking for, um, uh, well, <laughs> suffice to say, you, you do you do know what you're off to anyway. Okay. Um, and you're both cast. You're using the uh, boots. The boots. And you're casting fly. Mm. Okay. Um, while we're traveling there too, um, yeah, specifically staying back a little bit, mm -hmm. um, just following, and I'll keep. Uh, a hand in my pocket to hide any, um, I guess, channeling of his energy through those tattoos on his arm or those engravings. Uh, and I'll be casting uh, Identify, but Arik will be acting as the conduit, so it's a touch spell, but because he's touching Gunner, that'll be. And uh, so basically, for a minute. Oh, sorry, what do you identify? Uh, well, it says if I cast it on a creature, uh, I learn if any spells are currently affecting it. Oh, I see. Having noticed, um, well, being sent to the elemental plane, being stopped before, sure. um, hearing about Oberdin, uh, not knowing the entire history, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, just seeing if there's anything that's been affecting Gunner, as if Oberdin has any anything tethered to him. Got it. Okay, good to know. So, as you all walk, oh, sorry, fly, um, you you <laughs> make your way out of the room, down the hallway, floating quickly. You pass by several students who look back at you a bit confused, but you pay them no heed as you... No. As you move swiftly out of the Morgrave University and towards the Colts. So. What is Rook. the story? <laughs> <laughs> Rook, Amara, and Thorum. You had just gotten drinks. Is that correct? Went to sit down you had sit right next to the people that were telling the story. Yes, that is correct. That is very, very true. The story that's been told by Ulrich's brother, sur uh, being surrounded by about 20 patrons who are just, their backs are to you completely. And you are, um, you're, you're behind them. So as far as you're aware, they haven't noticed you at all. But in soft tones with a, with a violin playing softly in the background, you hear the tale of Dragon's Crown and how lost you were, but then the felling of a great dragon within the maw of a dead one and those that may have been around to witness such an event. And your bravery and your reward with a dragon horde and the riches that you received from it and a secret a secret enemy that lo that lay behind the dragon one of unknown terror and thus the story continues as it as he describes the beautiful scene of darkness and coldness and that you were all alone and they speak of the bravery of Barclays Fuck. with you as well <laughs> and all of your teamwork and might to overcome such a threat what are you doing uh, exactly what I just did <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take a sip of my drink yep um, before we went over and overheard the conversation, I would have ceremoniously placed um, Penelope yep. on the window ledge where <laughs> Barclays left um, Prickly Pete. Okay. And uh, told her to keep a watch out. So, casting speak with plants? Uh, I'm just, no, just talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. <Yeah. laughs> a plant. Okay. And um, uh, <laughs> join the others, hear that. 
Um, and I just kind of like nudge. Who would I be standing close? We like just well, next to one another or at the bar or. Well, we went to a table. I assume. When they went to a table. Yeah, so you, you can join them at the table soon after you put Penelope down, if you like. I think I'd be leaning back in my chair with my like, hands over the back of my head, just listening, probably watching Thor, because mm-hmm. I know he loves to listen to news about himself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very pleased. I'm leaning in. Yep. Every time they mention us in our bravery, I turn to the others for their reactions. I'm just disappointed each time. <laughs> <laughs> I look very, very embarrassed every time. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I will, however, grab my drink again, and I will look at um, Thor, and I will be like, um, to those we lost. Oh. And then I'll take a sip of my drink I'll again. Meet, I'll meet that cheers and take my own sip. Okay. And I guess you too. And um, we'll be back on the table, we'll take a drink. Um, did I remember Orcs' brother's name? Did, I need to did you him? write it down? <laughs> <laughs> Let Is me just Arga? go back to session 23. <laughs> <laughs> A-R-G-A? Arga. Arga, yes. <laughs> wow. Um, you were invested in Orcs. <laughs> God, I'm glad about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I take a drink and... Um, if you continue to sort of tell this story, I'm not going to interrupt. Yep. Okay. Um, and I turn to the others. How long will we be staying here for? Well, we were leaving in the morning, mm. right? Like early. Is there any other equipment or anything that we need to gather while we're here? <laughs> uh, DM question is still actually hard. It's only like it's, an afternoon. Or yeah. It's probably ma- maybe two p.m. Yeah. By this stage. Mm. Um. Honestly, after the day that I think we've had, I'm more than happy to just be here. <laughs> I think Duvago wanted to go back to the Enchanter in the morning before we left, but that's it. And I think I can buy any food that we need for the journey here at the tavern. Sure we can. We've done that before. Mm. Did you end up getting equipment? DM question as well. <laughs> Last I understood they were leaving back to the castle to get the stuff. Correct. Um, yes, I fashioned, I got the blacksmiths to fashion some equipment that I think Dravago is bringing back with him here. Oh, okay. Cool. Other than that, I don't think there's too much more. I uh, mean, my biggest asset are my fits. Fits. Fists. 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 <laughs> my fists of fury. My fists anyway, like, and my stuff, obviously, so like, I don't really need any equipment. I did tell Dravago I'd accompany him in the cogs. I think he wanted to spend some time in this area, or perhaps the next above. Just as long as we, as long as we can stay out of danger. Like I said, every time that we seem to try and do something else, we seem to find trouble. If we are really set on getting to the Lord of Blades, we need to rest and we need to be not not had another stop put to our journey. Yes. I've yes. I've gone into another plane of existence. We've had the airship crash. We absolutely need to just not let that happen again. At least for now. A small respite would be good. Remember that time you got stabbed in the stomach while we slept? Yes. <laughs> and I feel my side tingle. <laughs> Something like that shouldn't happen either. So we should probably try and room as many people comfortably in a room as we can. This suits me. And I raise my cup in a cheers. Yeah, I meet that cheers. I will also meet the cheers. Still kind of listening to the story. (laughs) Okay. So tell me your synopsis of Arga's story. He leaves out all the less favorable parts. All the suspect things we did along the way. He doesn't tell those bits. It makes the story a little better. <laughs> this is good news, I'm sure. Everything you hear is positive. Everything that is said is about your bravery, your, your trusting of each other, your power, um, your might, your um, how famous you are. It's You can see that even with a much older face than Orlix has. It's a 
<laughs> it's a it's one of youth when he tells it he's almost as though he was side by side with you and he was pleased in that way he he almost worshiping your your uh your doings mm. two he, questions if please, that's okay please number one having had a couple of sips of alcohol like is this hitting the way that it did the first time or am i like getting better at this um it's not enough to to hit you yet fantastic second of all what's the lighting <laughs> like in this tavern it's dim the would you say it's shadowy yeah yeah there, there are there are a few spaces that you can hide if you like you can see the the familiar upstairs to the rooms that are that are shadowy you can see behind the bar um so yeah there's um Alex's brother casting a shadow from where he stands you can't see it from that from that standpoint you'd have to sort of move up and have a look behind him you can't see if he is or not what's the closest shadow i can see behind him behind him is is the bar probably another meter and a half away cool i will um look at thorum and give him a little bit of a nudge and say hey should i just like appear behind him yes and like pop up like surprise Yes, you should, but wait for a good moment in the story. I will wait until the best moment with the most tension and passion in this entire story. Mm -hmm. Was you the one that slew the dragon? I will wait. Yeah, no, I don't think I was. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm pretty sure you did the last hit on it. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll wait until that moment. <laughs> and then I'll shadow step as close as I can behind him. Yep. And... Okay. <laughs> All right, as you do, um, <laughs> you take that moment and in the, in the second that he's describing that killing blow that Amara performed um, to slay the beast, you disappear and reappear. And then as you do, you jump up silently. Hey. There we go. <laughs> Argo looks behind you briefly and has a triple take. Huh? Sorry. Thorum told me to. <laughs> what is... It's, it's Amara, you hear from the back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, all those 20 people, and then the people around in the other tables that are not um, actively listening on this conversation suddenly cook their heads and, and try and see a little bit more clearly. You, you hear this audible starting of whispers. Then a couple of yeah, and then <laughs> Arga looks at you and put like almost shakingly puts his old hand with these small white hairs on on these on on the knuckles onto your shoulder. I'm just gonna, really, I'm just gonna put your hand on my shoulder so I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna like like high five. Like that. It's it's a man in the in the flesh. Emma! And you hear the crowd, this 20 odd people just go, ah! I get it there. Very and the cups, the cups in the air and, and cheers each other and try and rush you. Okay, and, I shadow jump upstairs. And, out of the way. And you completely disappear again and they're all looking and you hear this, ah! <laughs> this, this, this huge, uh, this huge worried uh Sound. I'm gonna pull my cloak up, and then I'm also gonna pull Rook's cloak up <laughs> next to this. Okay. Um, and I need to roll. Uh, are you trying to be sneaky and not be seen up there? Um, no, I'm or just, just like escaping be... the embarrassment. Okay. Hey, uh, hundred gold for the one that catches the monk. <laughs> okay. Uh, with that said, I put that. <laughs> With I that, yeah, I cheer at that. <laughs> okay. Um, with that said, you see that almost all well, they're all looking around immediately. One of them in the crowd goes, "This is." Um, you have is, one is, it dim here? is it? Is it? Is it dim? Is it dim? <laughs> it's dim where you are. I go invisible. Okay. All right. Um, make a self check, please. Oh no! It's a now one. <laughs> uh, stealth though. 
Yeah. Plus seven, so it's an eight. An eight? Okay. Um, you take a moment and you just are completely still. But as you went, as you went invisible, your arm knocked on the railing that overlooks the balcony to the, to the, uh, uh, to the tavern below. And you hear a couple of people shout in your direction and you see all of them go two by two up the stairs. They are racing up. I shadow jump back downstairs. Okay. Um, as you <laughs> Which shadow... I believe I actually stay invisible for. Yeah. Do you want to double check that for me just in case? Oh, I just figured. When you are in an area of dim light, you can use your action to become invisible. You remain invisible until you make an attack, cast a spell, yep. or you're in an area of bright light. Okay. And you go down. You can see that this crowd is is just all in one trot, all in one, almost like a a, 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 a a horde goes up to the top and all starts to rummage around. They're, they're, they're just reaching out aimlessly, looking for you. Um, and you are downstairs and looking up and seeing this a rush of people. Sneak up behind Rook. You hear one of them say, I got a hundred gold for me! And he's sort of holding what looks to be just the railings and he looks very drunk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sneak up behind Rook and just go, Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you see as well that that, that person who, had, who had said he had you is then thrown over the balcony and, and someone behind him says, no, I've got it, I've got it. And uh, he goes, ah! and lands heavily on the table and smack Rook, on, stop. Onto, the, onto the wooden table and rolls off. Oh! And is just, oh! he's just groaning under the under that uh, slam onto onto the furniture. Um, I'm gonna turn visible. Yep. And I'm just gonna be like, stop. I will buy a round of drinks for everyone in this bar if they stop chasing me. Persuasion check, please. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Nine. There she is! And you see everybody just start to race back down. The people who had not even yet come up uh, up the uh. stairs are closest. And they are close. I'm going to, like, shadow jump back upstairs. <laughs> I'm just going to, like, keep going. Like To be honest with you, that entire balcony is filled with, with drinkers. Then behind the bar. Behind the bar? Mm. <laughs> you appear and you I are... I will just keep, like, switching. Yeah, okay. As fast as I can. Okay. Um, and she just keeps up for a minute? What's that? She just keeps up for a minute? Yes. Okay. Because he said there's a minute time. Yes, 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 yes. Um, uh, the, the minute is is nearly done. It's probably about only 10 seconds remaining. But um, you go behind the bar. Are you sort of crouching or are you standing? Uh, I will absolutely just stand. Just stand I am Because tr- I'm popping so fast. Yeah. Well, as fast as I can. Yep. I will probably not worry about... Because I'll try and be faster than I am stealthier. Sure, 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 sure. Okay. Um, you watch as the, the there are, I mean, the, right next to the stairs is the bar. And so you see that there are people who are starting to leap over the bar and try and grab at you. Um, make me a dexterity saving throw, please. <laughs> you fucking asshole, Rook. Well, that's much better. Um, that's an 18. Okay, three of them went towards you. Two of them swiped past your clothing, and you hear them say, ah, "Oh!" in disappointment. But Have one some of them, respect. one of them, this this short um, orc or half orc, grabs onto to your uh, clothing and says, "I've got her hundred gold for me," <laughs> and he's holding on tight. He looks to whoever on my cloak, on your cloak, <laughs> and you hear an audible. Oh. I shrug off my cloak and shadow jump away. <laughs> okay, and you shadow jump. And as you do, the cloak falls to the ground. And he sort of goes, and falls headlong over the bar, Beautiful. behind the bar. Argo at this point says, okay, 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 stop. The minute's over. Thank God for that. Of course she won't get caught. And Mara, <laughs> she is exquisite. And uh, you see everybody just uh, i guess have their shoulders slumped now and uh i um i approach the orc and grab the cloak off mm-hmm. him and say how many people are in the bar uh on the bar in the or just tavern. in the tavern yeah uh in total maybe 35 people uh, not including you all 
Um, I do have to interrupt Please. very, very briefly, yes, only absolutely. because um, I don't know if you saw Michele, but I um, I challenged NVC DM and Aeoncraft to do a little dance oh. using one of our redemptions. Oh wow! Um, and if you go onto NVC DM's Instagram story, he has done the most <laughs> mighty of little dances Amazing. I have ever seen. I'm gonna check that in, in the break. Fantastic! Thank music you very, and very much. Like, thank you. Much appreciated. That's I was, uh, just, I was honestly just trying to be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. That's that's a reverse uh, reverse redeem right there. Um, I'm gonna go get my out. cloak. Okay. Put it back on and just be Sorry. like. As Mara nice. approaches, then I'll hand over the cloak. All right. And I say, Grace Ephes, uh, round of drinks on the house. Uh, you hear this only half-hearted, <laughs> hey, <laughs> and a couple of a couple of people just individually just start to clap, oh, and they all sort of start to sit that. down in their own in their own right and uh, in their own places now after the story abruptly is finished. And I'm so I... sorry, everybody. That was supposed to be just like me saying hello and and nice and fun, but Rook seemed to ruin it. Sorry, everyone. Did um, everyone have fun though? As you say that, <laughs> as uh, always, Aga, everything. Aga turns towards you. He's now uh, just next to the bar as well, and he gives you a bit of a, a glance. Rook, it's it's Rook, Rook himself, the the ranger, the mighty ranger. Uh, uh, and and you see the crowd almost whoa. Oh, what? Like, just go in shock towards you as well. Some of them actually start to back away a little bit. Um, <laughs> and some give you a bit of a cheer. Hey, Rook! And they, they hold up their glasses towards you. Uh, the mighty Rook! <laughs> Please, my friend. Alga says. Uh, Save your applause for Thorum. Blow uh, some fire, Thorum! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone looks towards, towards this, towards you now. Hey! Oh, and and uh, Alga says, Oh! The, the five, they're here. Where are your companions? <laughs> the rest of you. I'm going to I'm gonna like talk as I'm walking. And as I'm walking, I'm just going to walk behind the bar and say, they will be joining us soon as I pour myself a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Drink up. All right. And you see that uh, um, actually a couple of people follow suit with Rook's announcement of free drinks. And uh, they also go behind the bar and start serving themselves. Aga doesn't really seem to take any notice of it. He is now coming beeline towards you, Thorum. And as he does, he takes your takes your draconic arm and gives it a, a hefty shake. Uh, an honor. I shake back vigorously. An honor. Uh, how much copper do you want me to take off? Yeah, how much? We ask. I, I apologize for this, by the way. I point to all the drunks helping themselves. To drunks. Uh, you have to take two gold off. Two gold. Yeah. Two gold. Yep. Wow. I'm gonna look at him then. Noticing that I would notice that. Mm-hmm. Um. He has like twenty gold. They can just all drink free for the night. Um. Are you giving? Are you saying this only to Arga? Or yeah. Okay. Uh. He just. Turns to you and, I don't and need the recognition. quickly gathers the gold and says, oh, "Don't! I will, I will serve them, but don't give them that extra excitement." No, I won't. That's fine. That's why I'm telling you and you only. Well, the well, rest is your tip. Everyone now has calmed significantly, and it's at that point that Gunnar and Dravago <laughs> fucking fly in with <laughs> with Krivereth have now come into the tavern open the door let let yourselves in and seeing that this crowd is an excitable bunch you're not quite sure why but they're sort of talking um, uh, fervently to each other excited uh, uh, above whispers they're all saying words like uh, 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 the five and and Rukamara is here and and wow what, what, how what an honor I can't I don't even know what to say and things things of that nature and and you walk into this older, um, what clearly looks to be a relative of Orlix, uh, who is older and just to, speaking to Amara at this moment. Um, did I gauge anything from this identify spell? You on didn't the way identify there? anything that would be on Gunner that would that would have make you believe that. There's a spell that's cast on him, no. 
Um, would, just, would I have noticed the spell being cast through the slider? No. No, it, it didn't. It, it didn't seem like anything was amiss, although the spider was on you as it stands. So it, 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 it was still attached, which is a bit odd, but nothing else. It wasn't grasping, it wasn't digging in. So it wasn't an uncomfortable feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just have Eric return to me, just walking on the floor. Doesn't really matter at this point. Okay. But, uh, seems like you guys have got the crowd uh, going. I'm going to stand up on the bar. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to say, meet our new friend, Dravago! And the crowd, as by this stage, they've all taken a new drink. And as they all sort of are sipping and, and, and looking towards you all, they all turn towards you, Dravago, now. And no cheers. Maybe a couple of, huh. And interesting looks. He's really cool. And a couple of, uh, like one small group of, of patrons seems to start to clap in, in respect, like a, like, a, like a golf clap. But otherwise, just a, a few of them sort of cheers you, uh, toast to you, but that's it. I'll gesture towards the golf clap table and go, <laughs> <laughs> these guys get it. <laughs> Aga still talks to you, Amara, and he says, it is such great honor to have you here. Uh, what brings you to this place? Um, we have some business that we need to attend to um, beginning tomorrow. Oh. Um, and we just wanted to make sure that we would get safe, in, safe and good rest before we go. Oh, the rooms, uh, any room is yours, of course. Oh. That was Olix's uh, uh, wish. We will try and keep as many people in one room as we can. No, this is all we've got plenty of space. Oh, no, it's more of a preference than a okay. being polite thing. Of course, yeah, well, uh, uh, room uh, five is probably the, the largest. Okay. Is uh, that your room? Are you no, leaving no, no, yourself no. out? No, no, I, I sleep in the back. Oh. Um, and he pulls out a key and uh, hands it to you. Um, have you heard from Olix recently? He sends, he sends messages. Uh, he's well. Uh, at this stage, he's uh, somewhere in Valinor. Oh, wow. Uh, very, actually quite close to Gatherhold. Yeah, okay. Cool. Has uh, Have him and Barclays been in touch? Oh, he hasn't mentioned Barclays, no. Oh. I'm not sure. Barclays he's well. went home. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's fine. He had a lot of business to take care of there. He's, he's well otherwise, however. I mean, as far as we know, we saw him not that long ago. Um, you keep in touch then. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Um, but yeah, we have Dravago with us now. A new companion. Yeah, he's pretty cool. He pretty cool. A, 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 a pleasure. I am. I am Aga. Uh, you're traveling with companions that are very normal. Really normal. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, uh, that's exactly what I was going to say. Normal, uh, but um, you also look quite grand. Uh, you're not like other warforged. You are. You look fancy, different. fancy, quite cool. Apparently, uh, mm. that would be a word I'd describe you. Yes. <gasps> well, cool. an honor anyway. Um, <laughs> can I get you a drink? Uh, uh, he doesn't drink. Oh, well, I'm not sure if I can really, but you uh, can try. I think uh, when I meet uh, Rook's friend uh, Victor, we might uh, try 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 a few things. So we might have some culinary arts to, to talk about. Uh, what what do you recommend, Rook? And why don't we start with the best? Well, yes, I can. Fresh. I can, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I can bring out some some dark ales that are, are quite good in Shan currently, and he. It excuses himself and goes around the back behind the door where the bar leads into the kitchen and disappears. As the crowd around you once again. Can we see Gunner at this point? Yeah, yeah you can see Gunner as well. Oh my gosh, it's Gunner! <laughs> the, the crowd now turns towards you, Gunner. And the 20 or 25 people that have noticed you now, where Amara has pointed, a couple of them come up to you. 
these two people are wearing heavy cloaks, so it's hard to discern who they are. Oof. One of them is quite tall, quite stocky, and the other probably half his height. And you can see under the cloak this thin stream of blood that's from a cut on the cheek, it seems. And the large one walks straight up to you and n- leans down towards you and whispers, Oh, it's okay, Gunner. I'm well, it's just Ragav, it's fine. Shh. <laughs> And you hear the voice of the other, a dwarf, who says, Yes, I am here as well. It is Duke. I am... I am with your companion. We shall talk. Duke. Duke Roniont, it seems, an archmage of House Kandarak, yes. Are they all under arrest? To your understanding, not under arrest per se, but just disbanded as the Twelve. Last you saw Duke, he was talking to Melestra in the Moral Holt. That bitch. And she was trying to convince him to leave his armies there instead of taking them, bringing them to the Demon Waste, if you recall. And... Regav and Duke turn and they sit back down onto a, a table in a corner, the front corner of the bar, <clears throat> the tavern that leads out. And they just are whispering to each other and leave you there. The rest of them, the rest of the crowd simply look at you and a lot of them start to applause and say, Hey, Gunnar! <laughs> uh, one, <laughs> one of them yells, uh, where's your companion? Where's, where's, where's the dragon? Uh, and then so, so the mumbling starts and then they, they, uh, seem a bit more disinterested as they, as they go back to their own drinking. Did you want to see Kips, uh, says, oh, well, um, if a bit of, uh, if, if something is here, um, uh, that, that I should be visible for, then, then of course. But if you prefer, I can hide and, and not not show myself. I don't mind. I just I thought you might not want to be around so many people. Oh, the attention is is uh, quite disturbing. Yes. Um, if you don't <coughs> mind, I would I would prefer to stay within your your robes. Okay. And he almost you feel a bit of pressure as the claws sort of dig in a little bit more and stay a hold of you. What are the others doing? I'm off the bar now. Okay. What are you all doing? Uh, has the Dark Owl arrived? Yeah, I'm probably sitting with Revago. Yep. The Dark Owl has arrived. Um, and I'll find you... my way to that table. Sure. As you drink it, you have this... Uh, who's drinking it? Rook, Travago, awesome. Amara. Are you drinking any of this Dark Owl? You just got your, the one from behind the bar. One is served for you if you want it. I'll take it. I'll take it? Drink. Okay. Have a seat. Okay. Yes. That sounds a bit so you truly cannot taste anything. Uh, nothing yet that I've tried. Uh, perhaps this will... As he's talking, I'm like, like watching his mouth to see if he's like, got human elements, like okay. a tongue. And... Okay, make a perception check. Um, <laughs> what? You do notice that there's a bit of a focus that Rook is having on your, uh, on your lower face for some reason. <laughs> Is, do you want to do anything about this? Do you want to try and hide oh, this? Wow, wow. <laughs> uh, uh, 19. Not, not trying to hide, just kind of sussing him out and, um, yeah, well, uh, first time's a charm. I'll give him a cheers and just cheers and back. try and neck the whole thing at once. Um, okay. Interestingly watching him. Uh, what did you roll for your perception? 19. 19, that's enough. Can you describe... The inside yeah. of your mouth? Yeah. The inside of your it's mouth for him, please. <laughs> and look, and for me, I'm just purely interested now. <laughs> uh, look, ana- anatomically, it's it would be the same as a human. Yeah. Uh, still a metallic look, uh, different from his skin, uh, yeah. like a darker, darker metal. Uh, the sort of inside walls of the mouth. Um, 
I guess almost uh, almost a reddish tinge, but uh, <laughs> kind of like a rusted iron almost, but without the rusted texture. Yeah, okay. Uh, and a tongue weird. that uh, I guess would be... Looks like a functioning tongue. Kind of, kind of like a... Um... Would be how this conversation <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> It'd be like and... a, a dull, dull kind of like coppery gold colour. Yeah. And uh, having never down to drink before mm. uh, I'm also curious as to what's going to happen sure okay so as you all take a sip of this drink I'm sipping I'm not yep. necking a beer yeah definitely you taste almost like a balsamic strawberry like a, like one of those really sweet cooked strawberries and it's and it's a thick brew and as you take that sip it's warm it's a warm beer and it just coats your entire mouth as you as you as you swallow it. You uh, have this. Never run, please actually take a drink. Oh, take a I drink. No <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Good I've got hydration. Like the tabletop. Littlest, littlest sippy. Appreciate it. I will burp now. So <laughs> you um, there it is. So you swallow this and you feel this this like almost. An after effect of chili, like a really warm feeling going down your throat. Amara, make me a constitution saving throw. Fuck. Everyone else is okay. <laughs> um, this, no, you had too many sips now. Oh no, it's so bad. It's a seven. A seven. Right. Okay. Um, um, go on. Having, oh, yes. having, having seen this and uh, you know, noticed uh, Amara's behavior of late and now that she's uh, actually seems a bit upbeat and mm-hmm. uh, oh, I'm, I'm, wow. going, I'm going to uh, give her some inspiration and uh, again that kind of almost like a Wi-Fi signal coming from Dravago will yep. steal her constitution for this drink uh, so you'll get a plus four on that all right oh, okay. and that makes it a wait what did I roll um I think I rolled a nine. Did I roll a nine? Sorry. Are you using flash of genius on this? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Was it a seven or a nine? It was one or the other. It was a nine. Just imagine you just um, nine, <laughs> ten, eleven, like, twelve. Pulling down 13. the tank. Thirteen. 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 So much. Okay. <laughs> That's flash of genius. <laughs> Initially you feel just this automatic dizziness, this woozy ah. around you, as though you yourself have just slumped. And all of a sudden that washes away and you feel a little bit off center but otherwise okay and you you taste this drink and it is quite sweet um Dravaga, you taste nothing but what you do sen- have this sensation of is that warmth at the end almost like a almost like the the metal and those materials that make up your your clavicle here a heat uh, uh, actually heating up like temp like temperature wise it's an interesting feeling you haven't felt like something like that before so no no different taste but uh, a little bit of a hot flush <laughs> nice a flush a hot flush <laughs> and I look at Amara not on Urban Dictionary <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Have you experienced this before? No, no, it's uh, the first first drink I've had. I'm not sure what this is. Are you still interested in exploring the cogs or? Uh, mm-hmm. I've heard Warforge uh, frequent the area. It's be nice to have a check out. Um, would like to go to the either upper or lower Memphis district uh, from memory. Um, to source some materials before we uh, depart tomorrow. That's, uh, that's the main reason I came. But um, I didn't uh, didn't get a chance to get your arrows either. I got distracted and had a little trip to the elemental plane of air. As um, as we're having a conversation, I just uh, for another drink for Travago. Okay, um, another one gets put in front of you pretty quickly. And I like push it towards him with my mug. Mm-hmm. And um, I take a sip of mine, and that, that's fine. We can pick it up tomorrow. I don't think we will be wasting too much time tomorrow morning before we leave, and maybe not too much more ale before we venture out. Amara, how are you feeling? That was really thick. <laughs> yes, I liked it. It's very 
Okay. That was very sweet. It's I if I had to choose between this <clears throat> and just ale, I would choose the ale. And then I ask for another ale. <laughs> yeah. Ale for Amara. Alright. Thorum? I don't actually worry you too. Aga brings you a smaller cup of ale. Getting day ale. drunk, you know. Mm-hmm. It's fine. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I will like tentatively sip at it cool. because why the fuck not? Yeah, what are you doing? I'm gonna order the same ale. I yep. don't like this sticky ale either. Okay. Um, yeah. Do I notice um, the count sitting over in the table? Which Make a perception check. Is um, Argus still around as well? Or? Yep, he's, he's, he's the one that's serving you drinks. Oh, okay. uh, that was a nat one, so no. Not really, no. You, you're sort of now. <laughs> The, the crowd has sort of made their way around the one area toward the, uh, in front where, where they were listening to the tale and they had sort of moved. And so they, they're taking up sort of around where your table is now. Some, a, a lot of them looking towards you and towards your table, um, but you can't see anything past that. Uh, well, my good mood continues then. I, okay. I just keep drinking. Okay. <laughs> Travago, we should probably tell them what we found out. Uh, yeah. Um, should we grab a table? Are we at one? I look at the table. He's as good as any. You look at the table? Nice. Is there two right here that are free? So. (laughs) I'll pull up a chair. Okay. It's a bit odd since I felt that hot flush. uh, Things seem a bit odd. (laughs) Are you having the other one? I literally Um, do that, by the way. Cool. Is it not, uh,. Tradition to keep pace with your drinking companion's rook. Well, I don't know. Can you get drunk? Shall we find out? <laughs> <laughs> Can Victor? Uh, as far as I know, no. Unfortunately, he doesn't. Unfortunately. Uh, taste anything. He just likes to, I guess, act as though he is one of us. And not uh, not a warforged as such. That's, that's a bit sad. Uh, he has his quirks. <laughs> um, Victor, for his quirkiness, is. Oh, hell yeah. Thanks, Tabletop Troops, for Thank my subscription to our channel. <laughs> much appreciated. Thank you. Um, that being said, I know I said that very sarcastically, but um, thank you. I appreciate you doing that. Um, it's yeah, a hundred percent. Support is support. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Also, I never have to watch ads when I rewatch our <laughs> sessions now, so thank you so much. If others don't want to watch ads um, either, um, please subscribe. I'm gonna pay it forward and gift a subscription now Beautiful. to someone. Sorry, go on. No, that's it. Uh, as a great supporter of uh, autonomy for the Warforged, uh, he doesn't believe them to be all what they once were during the war. He actually founded our, I guess, mercenary group in the hopes to save refugees from the Mornlands. Well, uh, let's hope that we can save some from the Lord of Blades army. I think, uh, I think the Forge have a lot more potential than what they've been manipulated into in this world, so I'd, I'd like to meet Victor. Maybe we can, uh, discuss what we can do for them. I have a feeling he'd be very interested in seeing you. And I also believe with the guidance of with what he thinks and what he does, he may be able to sway much of the Warforged that are within the Lord of Blades camp for maybe a better lifestyle. And uh, what are your thoughts on the Lord of Blades? Do you think he can also be swayed or is he too single-minded in his endeavours? Uh, that I cannot answer. All I know of him is the strife that he's caused up and down the Mornlands. Up until recently, he hasn't done much more than cause havoc amongst them. Now that he's banded out with these false beliefs, I can only imagine he's a murderer. I hope there's a way to change him, but I do not think there is. Uh, well, I did uh, did do some research 
and found some interesting things about him in the university, but uh, perhaps, uh, Gunnar, you wanted to discuss what you found there. We both found it. Um, the forge. The the one in the Lord of Lights camp? No, the one in, the one in Charm. Well, that's what um, Ock mentioned. It's rumours that I've heard, but Ock gave us the potential location of Merrick's. Did we find life. that out also in reconfirming in the research that we did? That what? Huh? To find out what? The forge. The crea- creation? Uh, you're oh, the you're creation. talking about the one potentially Merrick's has in Sean? Yeah. yeah. Did, didn't we also confirm that though through our research? Yes, you did. You did find that there that there is um, there has been evidence in the past that a creation forge was exists in Chan somewhere. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I guess because you said that it was here potentially, and we just found evidence that it was as well. So it it looks pretty likely, and we we don't think the Lord of Blades has found it yet. And do you think that's why he's bringing his armies here? For that forge? Oh, he's not coming here. He's going to... Demon Wastes. My apologies. The forge here... Uh, the rumours I heard was that the grandson from the old patriarch of House Kanath is potentially doing experiments with the creation forge underneath Sean. The, uh, the goblin we met outside of Mara's monastery uh, gave us directions to potentially find it. But uh, I did come across a recount in one of the, uh, one of the documents in the library uh, that the Lord of Blades has a working creation forge in his camp. And that's what he's using to fortify himself with parts from other warforged and experimental efforts would we already know like I mean us already know he had a war uh, from what he was doing with the humans and then converting them into you didn't you it didn't, didn't specifically know it, it, it didn't no it didn't jog your memory of anything that would be considered a creation forge no yeah um, you and make a history check actually on that note Rook Uh, it's 12. Yeah, 12. 12? You don't remember reading about anything that would describe what a creation forge would look like? Would be uh, certainly what you saw with the blood being taken from um, these prisoners would be potentially part of the... Of the um, of the, the experiment, as it were, but there wasn't a particular uh, construction mm-hmm. that you'd imagine would be considered this creation forge that's been described. With the information, I guess I'd probably encapsulate it with what I understand mm-hmm. from um, Victor. Because mm-hmm. you don't, you never mentioned that they were actually creating more forge there. Or did he? Victor hasn't mentioned anything, no. No, okay. Um, we also re- re- um, mm-hmm. learned that the Lord of Blades has um, been modifying himself with parts of other Warforged, right? Yes, it's uh, a traveller from House Lyranda uh, has a written account of uh, being in the Blade, Lord of Blades camp. Um, I was actually thinking if we can maybe find a more stealthy way to incapacitate the water Lord of Blades. Uh, the Water of Blades. The Water of Blades. Uh, when Rook and I visited Leone, the King's, uh, King's blacksmith, he did give me uh, some blasting powder. Potentially, if we could sneak into the Lord of Blades camp, but I'm not sure uh, if he keeps these potential uh, upgrades for himself stored around, we could, uh, I could sew this into the, the fabric of it. You're going to blow him up? From the inside out. 
the, <laughs> the upgrades that you're talking about, though, they were from the bodies of, of the Warforged, right? Uh, that was what part of the uh, part of the recount said. Uh, he's experimenting with a lot of different things, but assimilating other Warforged parts into himself was one of them. Would it be possible that he would be able to assimilate human matter into him? This I do not know. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but there was this experiment that we saw happen a really, really long time ago when they were um, trying to drain... Mara just looks like she's trying to think a lot harder. Yeah. Um, trying to drain the blood from people um, into the Warforged. I know it because this, this is the path of thought that I'm taking as well. And, and there was sentience. They were trying to get the sentience happening. I don't know how. Keep using that word, but I'm not. Okay. The reason why I think I look this at the room very perplexed. <laughs> I also am perplexed. It's generally that. I've been told that Agnarak is the Lord of Blades. Who's Agnarak? A former uh, uh, member of our group. Our group? Of my group. But he was... I must... I could only assume he was slew by him before becoming... Maybe. The Lord of Blades. If he's taking parts off of other Warforged, then yeah, maybe. Wait. You're, you're, he was your friend? The Lord of Blaze? No. Parts of him. The Lord of Blaze, uh, out of, I'm actually using a question. <laughs> yeah, the Lord of Blaze was in the Mornlands when Agnorak was killed. But then I was told by Omatar that Agnorak is the Lord of Blaze. Yep. Um, no. Well. Not specifically, as far as I understand. Agnarak went out on a mission, a routine one, and only a few months ago, I learned from Onatar that Agnarak was the Lord of Blades, but Agnarak was killed by the Lord of Blades. Yeah. It's so really it, twisted. Is Agnarak the Warforged? No, he's an orc. So that would suggest that the Lord of Blades can assimilate biological matter into himself. This is what I would assume. Oh no. That would make sense for what was happening to the people when we were in the camp. And did and you have direct contact with the Lord of Blades when you were there? In the camp. Ah, uh, did we speak to him? Did we um, speak to him when I was disguised as one of them? We did. You did? Yeah, I spoke to him. There were brief moments of him commanding you to, to go this way and that. And at the very last moment, you um, you escaped his grasp. It went very badly. We ran away. Yep. It went very well. We got away. Barclays well, got stabbed. He's still alive. I just randomly stayed that out loud. Yep. <laughs> So when you interact with, with him, did he seem like a, a single mind or perhaps? It's hard to know whether one or two or three minds um, just command you to go certain ways. He wasn't like telling me his story. He was just telling me to go left or right. And then we ran. And then Barclays got stabbed. We didn't have a lot of time to approach no, you were saving Regav. And we were saving um, another friend. Hmm. Another friend. <laughs> Osei. Yeah, Osei. Okay, Every Osei. time they say Osei, I take a drink. Yeah. <laughs> another constitution saving throw, please. Fucking <laughs> 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 Oh, that's That'll make it a nat one. Wow, so good. Five. <laughs> <laughs> Five? All right. Total. You, order, you suddenly, after those couple of drinks, just feel yourself now get 
feel that similar real wooziness around you. I'm just going to hold on to the table uh, like I have done once before. You now have disadvantage on attack rolls and any ability checks. Just bear that in mind. Do I like sense that immediately? You don't do sense. I, do I sense that if I was to hit someone? It would be I difficult would to hit miss? someone. Yes. It would be difficult to hit someone. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Are you actually doing that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Argo, maybe some food for our friends. <laughs> I'm not hungry. Argo's yeah. around. He, yeah. he overhears <laughs> and, and um, in but moments you see... No, 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 no. I'm not hungry, please. He, he's already brought out a large salad. Um, tomatoes, mushrooms in there, um, tossed with this delicate lemony um, dressing. For you. Go on. Um... I'm trying to remember back, we, we had a, um, it was like a flashback or something that was shown to me. Mm-hmm. I feel like it was when Jose and Amara were going through our um, prophecies, and I think okay. I may have seen one. Yep. And it was, um, what's his name? Oh, that betrayed us. Friso. <laughs> yep. Friso and... Um, oh, the little blades like talking. Yep. Other. Yep. Was, was that a dragon prophecy or was it... It was. Yeah. Um, and the form of the blade, Lord of Blades shifted and changed, right? Not the Lord of Blades, no. Friso shifted. Oh, okay. Yes. Friso shifted to be Malestra. Hmm. That's right. That bitch. That bitch. Mm. <sighs> While they're all talking, I'm going to close my eyes um, and I'm going to scry on it. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> and this, uh, sorry, forgive me, Rook, uh, Argonac? Ag- Ag- Agnorak. 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 Agnorak, uh, part of your group. What was he, what was he like before? His death. He was one of the three. So, the, in the wait, you had a group called the three? That's so weird. We're the five. Can I pay attention? <laughs> <laughs> the Chimera, uh, as individuals, there's three that lead it. One's Victor, one was Agnarak, and the other's Perbac. Oh, okay. Lame. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> but that's how they do me out. The leadership. And what was his demeanour back then? Nothing like the current Lord of Blades? Mm. We wouldn't want to get him into a rage, but his goals were honest and aligned with the rest. Saving those from the Mornlands was his utmost duty. Do you think we could take him? Agnorak was pretty powerful. Could you? He's probably the strongest amongst us. Could you beat him? Maybe from afar. How afar? Afar. I wouldn't want him closing distance on me. Hmm. Doesn't sound good for me. So I would assume your goal would be to help or save Agnorak, if possible. I mean, if possible, yes, but I must admit I don't hold much hope. If he's been simulated like what we saw with the people in the camp when we were there last, I don't imagine there's much to have left of Agnorak. It's only by... Uh, I pause for a moment. I guess divine guidance that I've been asked to save him if I can. I'm not sure how much of him there would be to save. But if there is an opportunity, then yes, I'd take it. How many pieces are in a Warforged? I look at Amara and... Are you sure you don't want some salad? (laughs) (laughs) Already given it to (laughs) you. I start eating the salad. Yeah, okay, cool. It's it's fantastic. It's so well balanced and very light. Um, 
You don't usually maybe go for salads, but this is, this is maybe an exception. Uh, well, perhaps uh, visiting this uh, laboratory of Merrick's Jr. If he has a creation forge himself, he might be able to gather information on any potential ways to separate Agdarak from whatever this Lord of Blades being is. I find that information quite interesting. Uh, well, Gunner, I believe you potentially wanted to visit this lab? Um, does this happen before or after I cast Scry? It happens um, after, so you get Scry first. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so as you... Before, before you do oh, that, sure, sure. Um, I just also want to... I'm still wearing the cloak. Yep. Um, and I also wanted to grab out um, <clears throat> Frito's wand and hold that. Okay. And also... Um, his door key, his house key. Okay. So even though I know that these items were given to me by Frieza, the confusion that I have over whether Frieza was his himself or at some point um, Malestra, mm. um, I'm just trying to use these items as a way to channel. Sure. Yeah. No problem at all. You rolling? No, I'm rolling. You roll. <laughs> yes. Um, um, yeah, so for every possession um, I have... Oh, I rolled before. It's fine. Um, <laughs> you... Okay. It, it works. It, okay. it's, it's successful. You hold these items and you focus away from your position. And you only take a, a moment to understand Malestra's location. And you see that... She is in some sort of building that you don't recognize. And as this shimmer appears, you see that there, it's, it's, it's a large round room, light gray stone walls. You look out the window, it's blurry, but you just see a sunny day and she's pacing. And that you can see around the gray, on the outside of this gray uh, room, it's well carpeted. There's a, probably about, uh, the, the outside is filled with chairs, stone chairs, all cushioned. Um, in the center there is a table, she's pacing around this table. You said the stone chairs are around the outside, like lining around the room. Does this look like the one that I saw where the council was convened? Yeah, it, it looks similar, but it's not the same room. It doesn't seem to be. It's slightly different. There wasn't a, there was, this table in the center is a stone table. There wasn't a table last time. Um, although it could be the same building. It might just be another level. And you can see that she's heavily wounded. You can see that she herself has a scalp bleeding, hair fallen out. You can see she's breathing heavily. She has this bandage that her one, her right hand is holding on her left hand, where this large arm gash is is uh, is uh, had just open wound. She's wearing a black dress, and you can see that on one foot, what seems to be happening is some toes are starting to regenerate from being torn off. Ugh but they seem to be growing back. And she's by herself. And she's every now and again, pacing back to this, hobbling back to this table, looking at some maps. Can I see what they are? Looking down at them. They're of Corvair. And then another map hones in on what looks to be this um, more of a more of a zoomed in on the demon waste and there are uh, what look to be pencil marks that are all over it you can't quite discern what it's what it seems to be a, a, a meaning is it a language or is it just scribble scribble lines um, arrows things like that a lot of those arrows are pointing away from the demon wastes in different directions north and south and, and west uh, east sorry 
east. Towards the Elden Reach. Yes. And south towards the Shadow Marshes. Just before Drivago disappeared in the Morgrave University, what did I feel? Did I feel anything in particular? Like a, a feeling, a sensation? Emotion, you mean? Or yeah. yeah. Emotion specifically? Yeah. Yeah. A sense of loss that your friend disappeared? <laughs> <laughs> Just loss. Uh, apart from loss, obviously. Um, this pride? A sense of pride? A sense of... Accomplishment. Fuck you, a sense of, <laughs> a sense of um, confidence. Okay. And that, when that appeared, did, did I feel anything like magical happen through my body? Did I feel any. Yes. Um, you felt yourself almost have you felt your skin actually harden as though it's just a lot more a lot hardier a lot more resist resistance to things potentially okay but you don't know what <clears throat> i'm going to try and focus on that sensation that feeling mm -hmm. um and channel it through my anger towards this person that i'm seeing um and I'm going to try and will her to disappear. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. And I'm going to say go. <clears throat> okay. So as you use that feeling that you remember, and you draw on that and you push that through, you feel yourself start to shake. Your body seeing this other scene, you can feel yourself in this position, in this placement. As you do, you all look over and you see you hear first a bit of a, 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 a chair that's rattling and you look over and you see Gunnar that starting to sweat and you see him just shake his head just going back and forth like uncontrollably almost like he has the chills I'm gonna get up and grab him and shake his shoulder Gunnar wake up all you hear is a whisper and you are being quite forceful. You don't feel anything. Thorum, your push has no effect. And through the scrying, two things happen at once. A voice of Obradin, almost a feeling of pleasure, says, well done. And Malestra disappears. And you suddenly get pulled back out of that and make a constitution saving throw, please. So in that one. <laughs> <laughs> you will watch as you, bl you just see darkness. And uh, as you hold on to Gunner, he falls the other way and uh, just crashes onto the floor in a heap, unmoving. I take a knee next to him and pull one eye open with my thumb. How's he doing? He's breathing. Make a medicine check. Okay. What the fuck? Rook, did you give Gunner beers too? <laughs> <laughs> Is that cocked? No. That's it? Okay. Let's see how it's laying flat. That's fine. Okay. That is a 22. A 22. Okay. Breathing, unconscious. Okay. Um, the chills have subsided almost immediately. And it's just a shallow breath that's coming from him. He's alive, but there's almost a, 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 a massive change in color of his face, extremely pale. I would have um, probably, if I fell over, my hat would have fallen off and I would be now uh, verdant again. The very pale green verdant. Yep. 
and put his hat back on. <laughs> Doesn't do anything. No, it didn't. Do no, it has to be conscious. Ah. Oh. Um. I. You see a couple. You of, just throw in my face. <laughs> you see a couple of pa- uh, patrons stand up and sort of look over, a little bit concerned. Oh, if that's the case, I guess they want to scrape him up and so give like, him a cuddle. Give him a cuddle. No, I'm going <laughs> to take him upstairs to a room and put him to bed. I guess. Wait. Room five. Room five. I head upstairs to room five and. Would you like some? No. I head upstairs to room five and tuck him in. Make a strength check as you attempt to carry this this uh, unconscious Enormous form. Enormous child. <laughs> that is a fifteen. Yeah, that's enough. You lift him and Rook and Dravago and Amara. You watch as Thorum silently takes the key and starts to move an unconscious gunner away from you. That was really fucked. There's been a lot going on with gunner in recent events. Uh, well, while we're in the... Should we go after them? I think we should check I on him. I feel like we should go after them. <laughs> this is, this is, sitting here feels weird. Um, could you help me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 okay you're aiding Amara's aid, aid grogginess Amara, yeah. yep okay you are you following suit oh, okay you all follow Thorum quite close behind and you all unlock room 5 and enter in inside there are three double beds in this quite large room almost lounge room size and it overlooks a familiar looking thin lava river, this stream um, <laughs> that runs all the way around the cogs. All the way through the orcs in there. Um, you did so, but a ways away, but it's the same stream. Um, you. <laughs> um, there's also a couple of desks with mirrors. Uh, you also see a bit of a wash basin stone in build in one of the corners as well. Uh, and Thorum, you have gunner. Um, if I have a medicine kit, just, that would have smelling salts in it, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Gonna... <laughs> As you carry him past the mirror, you notice he doesn't have a reflection. Just kidding. Yeah. Kips suddenly looks at you, and in your mind, it says, "What happened? Is he alright?" I. I Heard commotion and, and I'm, I'm concerned. It's, it's, going, it's going to go, going to be okay. Uh, out loud for the benefit of the group, I say, "Don't worry, Kips. He had a fit of some kind, and he's alive. I think I, yeah, he's alive. Just to fit in. He lives. Good. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll I, stay by his side. I can put water on him. I I wait there with the smelling salts. Yeah. No, no, I don't wave him. Yeah, I go. Yeah, may as well try. <laughs> I pull out my water skin and I just. Yep. Should you put a towel over his face first? Oh, <laughs> actually, I might need to ask a DM question. Yeah. Because I just, as I said that, I had what like... What did you have in the, in the A skin? fear. Yeah. And I actually think I had that cherry liqueur. You do. <laughs> you do. That's yeah. really potent. Yeah. So you pour, this, you pour this cherry liqueur all over <laughs> the face of Gunner and you can see instead of drunkenly like (laughs) (laughs) instead of this clear liquid which we were expecting this dark red thick liquid pours on him and automatically you all smell this enormous um, waft of cherry and as it covers Gunner you can see a lot of it goes into his nostrils and and uh, even in, you can just see it flow into like a slight open mouth. Um, yeah, incline his head up a little bit and just give him a little bit of... <laughs> I'm going to look at Thorum and go, sorry. Ah, well, it was worth a try. I put him down. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and then I'll use this, try and use the smelling salts to wake him up. Okay. Um, what, the cherry liqueur was not potent? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happens. Um... You can keep those smelling salts. Mm. They don't go to waste, but they... I can help you check on him. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Oh, please. Like, with my medicine. 
Yeah, please, I may. I just want to, like, check his vitals. Yep, do so with a dis- disadvantage, please. <laughs> Even if I'm helping Thorum? Yep. You're doing this separately. I also have a disadvantage now. Because <laughs> you're getting annoyed. <laughs> five. A five? You, <laughs> you're going to kill me. You don't think he's breathing. He's not breathing! <laughs> Thorum, help him! Is he breathing? He's breathing. I go... I push down on his tummy and the air comes out. I go, look. <laughs> See? That's the last of it! Quick! <laughs> I go, I point at his tummy again. It goes, eh, as he breathes back in. I go, look. Um, do I now notice You notice that. that. Good. You passed my test. <laughs> um, You've helped me before, have you? Maybe. No. Who? You can cast things. I don't have anything that will help him. You can't, like... Heal someone? No, I actually can't. I can heal, him. I, I can heal him, but it's I not think, hurt. I think the cleric Maybe might try. have that covered. Just try. I guess I'll use Cure Wounds. Okay. At the first level. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case we go into battle. Just in case. As you, as you do, please roll the dice. You get a... If it works, ten, 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 ten. back. Okay. Um, the magic itself it, it, it flows over Ghana and dissipates. You're not sure, however, if there were wounds per se that would that would have required healing, but you were just concerned, perhaps, for the fall. Um, so, to your knowledge, that it did seem to help somewhat. Wait, let's look at his book. There might be something in there. <laughs> yes, you should. <laughs> He's told me that I can look at it. Then for yes, all right. Then. If he doesn't mind. I can't read right now, so I'll take the book and give it to you. <laughs> uh, well, well, that's going <laughs> on. To me, um, once, once again, I'll get Eric to <laughs> sit on him and start to cast Identify again to see if there's been a change, if anything spell-wise is affecting him. <laughs> With okay. <such> waves. <laughs> So that takes a minute. All right. A minute passes, and once again, there's no magical effect currently affecting Gunnar. It simply looks, it seems simply like whatever had, had caused this had happened in an instant before this moment. So there's no ongoing effect, it seems. Whatever effect was um, happened, happened. Um, so. Nothing new seems to be affecting him, no. Thorum, I'm not joking. Go through the book and see if it's happened before. Maybe there's something in there. Um, okay. So I'm gonna... How much is written in this book? Gunnar, do you want to describe a bit about your book, please, to Thorum? Um... As he so it's a front and a back cover. Um... <laughs> got some pages in it. Um, some of those pages have writing on them. <laughs> what portion of this book would you say has writing on it? <laughs> like how much? Yeah. Um, probably over half. Okay. I'm going to turn to my... There's too much for us to read here now. No, don't read it. Flick through it. He draws pictures in there too. Just pictures of Okay, I'm going to save those. But the... Um, so... All right, we'll try the book, but I'm going to try something a little more direct first. <laughs> I'm going to pick up Gunner and scream as loud as I can, Gunner, wake! And then with wake, I'm going to cast command at first level. So I speak a one-word command to a creature that I can see. It must succeed on a wisdom saving throw. Which you automatically fail. Now, it has no effect if the target is undead, it doesn't understand my language, or if my command is directly harmful to it. Right, okay. Doesn't say he has to be conscious. <laughs> yeah, it does say I have to understand it. No, well, no the language. The language. I scream. You understand common. I'm screaming into your subconscious. <laughs> I really yell. <laughs> Wake me up! Poor kids. Wake me up and you probably can't Thank probably you. be good for your health, though. If the target can't follow your command, the spell ends. Is a line in there? Where's that? <laughs> Where is that? <laughs> Let me see the script. The <laughs> You're wrong! No, no. 
Um, it's that line that I'm a bit concerned about. It's okay. It tracks for Thorum as a cleric. <laughs> Uh, wow. Mm. Um, so, so for that purpose, I'll have to say, the spell is cast, and you know that it's 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 uh, it's the spell's ended, and that's a spell slot taken. But it's in in, <laughs> in an unconscious form. Unfortunately, if he was asleep, um, it would it would wake him up simply for the voice. But gonna <laughs> is for definitely not asleep. I'm going to turn back to Amaya and say, all right, let's try the book. I'll let him go. I'm going to try and... Um, <laughs> Onto the mattress. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to try and speak into his great. mind. Okay. And I'm just going to say, hey, Gunnar. Yeah. Gunnar. No effect. Oh, my God, he's dead. I'm just flicking through the book. Um, while everyone's huddled around, everyone's going to go to the window and have a look out. <laughs> Make a perception check while you do. Gunnar, could you um, tell Thorum a couple of things about what he might find in your book? Uh, what are you reading? So I'm looking in particular like any of the parts that are in bold text or that are highlighted or any drawings or diagrams. I'm looking for words like sleep <laughs> or knocked out or shake or something like that that's relevant. To our current situation. Do you, have, do you have particular titles or headings on top of any of what's yeah. written in there? I'll pay attention um, to that. Yeah, like, it's it's a diary. It's mm. a self-reflective diary. So what you do read, you don't see anything in there relating to, to sleep other than um, dreams or things that he is, like, piecing together from his fractured memory. Um, and then... Reflections on his reflections, like I don't remember even thinking about that before or that kind of thing. Um, but there's nothing specific about um, what's happened to him. Hmm. Um, How much time do you spend reading it though? I'm just going to spend a little bit longer. And if uh, I'm going to let these guys do some more stuff and just keep flicking through it. Okay. Just going to pace really badly. Mm hmm. Um, 19. Looking out, you see. <clears throat> A trade day. You see people that are walking past um, this particular side of the tavern. is two story, and you notice that people are below you that are walking along a path of rock and adjacent to a stream of slow moving lava that people are avoiding. Um, there's no boundary that would separate that, but there's a, a steady stream of people that are making their way through the, the um, with their wares or uh, as message, messengers going back and forth. Um, people with backpacks on. There looks to be a couple of adventuring looking uh, women and uh, elves and, and half orcs. It's uh, there are children playing and hop skipping and jumping around the rocks, throwing them into the into the lava. Uh, mm. There's this heat that emanates from the ground up, and it's a it's a fairly warm environment. But there's nothing that you can see that would be otherwise interesting or suspicious. Um, turn around after. Did we? Did you say out loud that there's nothing magical affecting him, or that's just what uh, said? not yet? This was all going down. <laughs> um, I turn and look at Gunnar. Would I understand if he's just exhausted from where this happened? You can make a medicine check if you'd like to. <clears throat> what? That's not one. <laughs> oh. Uh, we hate Gunner. Gunner, <laughs> he stopped breathing He's again. So green. Gunner, Gunner looks dead. Um, I mean, knowing what I've heard these guys say, I know he's not that yet. Yes, but at this Today, moment in yeah. time, it might have changed. You are a bit concerned looking at him, perhaps. Perhaps you might be, you might, be. but he isn't breathing at this particular moment. Wow. Whereas, whereas only moments before, Thorum did confirm that he was breathing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, nothing's going on. <laughs> Nothing. Really Can't figure out anything. 
I can do that. Oh my god, we're gonna be the four. Understand. <laughs> you look uh, mildly concerned, Rook. Well. After today's events at the castle, and what we learned, I'm sure Oberdin wouldn't let him die here. Uh, speaking of which, uh, when we were at the library, uh, Gunnar had a, another little moment and sent myself and Livereth to the elemental plane of air. Briefly. He did bring us back, but uh, I do suspect this was probably Oberdin's. Uh, doing. What are you talking about? Yeah, I hang on hey, you, you're not you're not special, Amari. You're not the only one who's been to a different plane of existence today. <laughs> what? Uh, I did. Uh, I throw my water skin. <laughs> I've no, just in, <laughs> just in general, in a general direction that it flies out of my hand. <laughs> okay. It lands onto onto this wooden floor um, and scatters the rem- remnants droplets of this cherry liqueur. I uh, I did check him after this event uh, to see if he was affected by any magical, um, I guess, spells, and uh, I didn't wasn't able to detect anything. Uh, it's the same now. Uh, after whatever's happened to him, it doesn't seem to be an ongoing magical effect taking hold of him. Perhaps he's just exhausted from all these outbursts and fits he's had. Well, I'm not sure uh, what your experience of Oberdin is, but uh, it does seem to be getting a bit... Much. Well, just uh, a bit random, these... These effects, uh, I mean, we were all frozen briefly outside the king's chambers. Yeah, that was not nice. Mm-hmm. Didn't like that. I'm going to, like, lay my head on Gunner's chest mm-hmm. and just make sure I can hear a heartbeat. You can. I'm just going to keep my head there. Okay. <clears throat> yep. Still beating. I don't think we should give up mm-hmm. yet and turn him into a pillow. Shh. <laughs> I'm flicking with one hand through the book and I'm just waving the salt under his nose with the other. So you will actually um, read, you'll notice that if you're flicking, um, the book actually transitions from, the, at the beginning of the book it's actually quite structured and it has, um, it looks more like a school book or an exercise book um, with note taking, that kind of thing. Um, and as you progress to a certain point, it stops. Um, and then when it picks up again, um, it's a lot more sporadic and it's a lot more just thoughts and um, emotions and feelings, but it still continues on um, noting things like spells, but like the way that he casts them is not the way that you'd be familiar with casting a spell. It would be like um, describing the emotional and the, fi- the um, physical feelings that he feels inside when he creates an effect. When I notice this difference in the style of writing, do the events of the novel, or sorry, do the events of your journal, are they, like, are we in the story yet? No. No. Okay. I, I do you on. spend more time reading that part, though? Yeah, I keep on flicking with one hand, and I'm just going to put the salt down, give him a little slap on you the do, side of the head. You do just see, gently, you wake up, give him a shake, nothing, back to the salt. So mm-hmm. You do see, um, after, if you flick through a little bit past the, where the uh, events, sorry, the writing style changes, you d- do notice the word morning um, appear a lot, but not like morning in the morning, like yeah. M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. Mm. The event of the capitalism. Mm. As you pace Amara and <laughs> watch outside Rook while conversing, while Thorum is every now and again giving Gunnar a good across the face just gently, just and reading through, waiting to see if there's any change and resting if you can while keeping an eye on him. Kip's curled up next to Gunnar and almost looking at him just as focused as you've ever seen him. 
we will take our 10 minute break there. I knew it was coming. And you had this like sound to your voice. I yeah. was like, oof, yeah. break time. Break time. <laughs> 10 minutes. Uh, hey, everybody, we'll take a 10 minute break now. And um, also, all the subs. So good. Thank you very, very much. So good. Um, also, very, very. Um, also, very, very briefly, we had our um, logo designer. Um, oh, cool. in the comments so um, oh. if you stopped by or if you're still here hello Elliot um, you can find Elliot's socials um, in our rolling video yeah um, instagram.com right forward slash Elliot as Dale um, it's right there yeah. and D20 thanks very much for the follow much appreciate um, D20 is a, uh, a, yeah. a, a, a a person that I will chat to very shortly uh, soon and D20 be... also bid on my game yeah exactly right yeah, yeah we're coming to coming to some games of these just for days so can't wait alright we're gonna see you everybody back in 10 minutes uh, we will see you soon
And we're back. Hello, everybody. I, I like surprising them. I wouldn't have been surprised. Whoa, there it goes. That wasn't that was in the uh, oh, yeah. topple. Oh, no, we are. What happened? Yeah, you actually are. Oh, there, uh, there was a near topple. Near tipple. Um, and a save. So, uh, thank you for your for your patience. And we're back. We're going to go straight back into it. Um, so, of the next... Of the next hour, nothing else really changes. The sounds from downstairs become a bit softer as people go back to work after their lunch break or their uh, their visit <laughs> That's right, to the tavern. Time. They <laughs> their late lunch. Um, it becomes about three, so mid afternoon, as. The remaining time passes uneventfully. Gunner still unconscious. Thorum still flicking through. But in that hour, is there anything that you want to do? I would have paid particular attention. So if I have a full hour to be flicking through this book, and I would stop, obviously, if he wakes up. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, But I'd pay attention to... um, Once I've browsed a little, I'd pay particular attention to maybe like the most recent four weeks or so worth of entries just to because that might hold the key to what's going on here yep go for it what, what, what's and those, like, what are some been... how long have we been together it's probably been now maybe it's like 59 episodes <clears throat> maybe the last couple of months um Okay, so I'm just trying to recap in my head what the last month would have been like. Uh, can you give me a hint? <laughs> what would the lot like if I go back a month from this date? What what would be that? What would be happening? Um, it's probably back when. Just quickly, <laughs> so we can go back and see when it would have been approximately. Um. before freezer betrayal yeah yeah (sighs) plentiful time before just before the byways could everyone please hydrate thank you thank you um kill 223 thank you very much we will certainly do that for you and thank you for the board thank you just before the byways (laughs) so in fact almost to the point of the stadium Oh gosh. Wow. Yeah. That's all been a month? Yeah. Well <clears throat> it. Um that's a lot <laughs> to fill you in in. Um you don't have to you can I gloss like, over I'll, whatever you want. I'll give you the abridged version. Um So he does write about you guys quite a bit. Um but it's it's like almost like it kind of like repeats itself. Um, and re- again, reflecting on his reflections, um, you'll notice that he writes every morning and every night. Um, um, he talks about Fariso um, and how he wish hopes that maybe he will be um, someone he can get close to. Um, <laughs> um, and that he is really interesting and he looks mm, in a way you can tell by the way he's writing about him that he looks up to him um, his abilities are starting to flourish um, and he's starting to get an understanding of what he's capable of um, then skip forward a little bit he's a bit confused uh, about how he fits in to the party but um, nothing Nothing too dramatic, just like, I don't know what what we're doing. Um, And then kind of fast forwards to uh, meeting Oberdin and just straight up not trusting the guy. Um, And also being, feeling guilty for um, uh, Rook getting caught up in that 
mess um, and not wanting to pursue it any further because from what he kind of rel has related back from the previous entry, um, Oberdin was a source of his pain and he doesn't want that to continue. Um, and then skipping forward again, um, <clears throat> going down into the Underdark, um, having a strong sense of wanting to keep everyone safe um, and protect them from the drow. <clears throat> Um, and the confusion around the, the Red Death and what that, whether or not he can stop that or even help in any way. Um, meeting Lolf was very confusing as well for him um, in that he didn't believe that gods existed. So he ride, riding in there basically um, is, is figuring that out and how that could potentially fit into his understanding of how everything works. Um, and then the betrayal of Frizo as well, as, as well as um, Melestra, just finding it harder to trust people because um, they either get hurt or they are going to use him. Um, so not, not so much trust, l less trust and more allowing himself to get close to someone. Um, yeah. Hmm. As I read that, I'm going to stop smacking him in the face. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> close the journal up and then tuck it inside a uh, pocket on the inside of his robes. And I turn to the others and say, you know, provided no insight into his condition. Damn it. What you do find out, Thorin, though, is with over that hour and that medicine check that you did roll, it could be some time before he does um, <clears throat> regain consciousness again. But it didn't seem like his vitals were in danger. It seemed like almost like a deep sleep, like he simply needed some time to recover from whatever happened. He might die. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Um. <laughs> <clears throat> Did you say he's waking up? Or? No. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> he ain't getting any better. <laughs> roll, roll a constitution saving throw. <laughs> I'm um, over the hour span of just organizing equipment, things like that, checking my inventory. Cool. Um... After seeing before the ten-minute break, um, is Kip still there? Yep. And visible. Visible. Um, Le um, Livereth yeah. is visible again and in the room and simply on one of the chairs at the vanity, one of the vanities, um, observing silently. Uh, I'm sorry, I guess my back to it. Uh, to them, and um, as I'm doing what I'm doing, I guess on a bench. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of, I guess, tighten my lips and, um, change my language to Draconic mm -hmm. and speak to Kips. Uh, and Kips, what do you make of this? We're waiting an hour now. It has not happened before. I don't remember happening, uh, it happening before. He's alive. Um, that's, that's something, I guess. The... I'm concerned for him and whatever magic he performed just before he did go unconscious was different. It was unusual. Uh, recently he has, it has, he has acted unusual. I have not wanted to seek an understanding for this because I'm, I'm concerned what I would find. He hasn't told me much, which is also different. Uh, I don't have the answers, Rook, but I feel he will recover. He will be okay. We just may need to wait a bit longer. I um, say back to him. Yeah, actually, do I have an understanding whether or not Kips was frozen as well during the 
Situation at the castle? Uh, no, you have no idea. Were you yourself frozen? I was, yes. And do your concerns spread further than just the gun? Or were you part of those concerns? No, not at all. I, I don't, I don't feel like you were the cause of this. If that's if that's what you mean. In our lives. Of course, we are. Con- oh, I am concerned for your lives. Gonna relies on you, relies on all of you to to keep him safe to keep to keep him you protect him and then what do you make of this then the last 24 hours has been something quite different of course i don't think gunner is intentioning to put you in harm's way or making you want to be distrustful of him i think he's confused as, as much as you are i think from the feeling, he is simply looking for the answers. I think he is, it sounds like, he is in communication but with Oberdin. But I don't think it is because of him. I don't think he wants to be. I think he is being forced. Gunnar seems to forget much of what you remember of this Oberdin and Char. His memory is not as sharp as mine, yes. So, I'm, I am. Um, I am, I'm, I remember more, if that's what you're saying. Are you free to elaborate? Uh, I do not want to seem out of place. Gunnar has, and had been a prisoner when I met him. I don't want to reveal anything that he wouldn't want to reveal himself. But know this, he is vulnerable because he has been put into circumstances in the past that were torturous almost. Have you ever been tortured, Brooke? In your mind or in your body? Perhaps not in the same way as our friend Devils and Silence. The great straps have been brought against myself and others. If you ever had been, you may look upon him differently. I'm not saying to respect him. I'm not saying to feel more emotion for him. All I'm saying is to be aware. That's in his short life, much has happened to him, and just, just take care of him, because I can't. If you feel as though it's rest that he needs, then we should leave him here. I wouldn't. As you know, forever. We have very little time. I can try something. If. Time is of the essence, and you, we need to be in our way, and I know this. Uh, I, I might be able to help. If you don't exert yourself, then do it. But we're going to need everything that we... I understand how important it is for you, in particular, to get away from here. So I will do my best. And he thinks for a moment and looks at you again, <clears throat> and you see this small red form go up to Gunner closer and you can see that his small head probably only about a few inches long thank you very much Keel and have a good night um, you see that his small head rests on the throat just just gently on Gunner and you can you can almost see that there is a there is a, a, a almost a purring from him. I need to roll something. Okay. And make a make an arcana check for me, Rook. Me? Okay. Yep. <clears throat> <laughs> wow. 
comforting. <laughs> 13? Yeah. You sense something is happening and you feel this <laughs> almost adrenaline build up inside of you as this deep purple light seems to be connecting Kips to Gunner. Mm. And then it disappears. As Gunner, you open your eyes and you are now conscious again. And you look up and you feel Kips on you and comforting you. And in your mind you hear, are you well? From Kips. You feel, you feel pretty good actually. You feel awake, almost like a full night's rest. Yeah. Stick the smelling salt in his nose. As you, (laughs) as you do, the, (laughs) you do also, you do feel a couple of things at the same time. Overwhelming cherry. And, and then suddenly these, this, this thing underneath your breath that just, just knocks you back as an overwhelming smell of salt reaches your senses. It's worked. <laughs> He's awake. Oh my god, we did it! He's <laughs> um, still around. He's, he's he hasn't moved. Um, I guess I nodded at him in confirmation. Yeah. And that's okay. I will actually check. Is he all right? Like. Yeah. I'll. Um, I'll. Uh, it's, it's been an hour. I'll make another message check for me. If, that, if that's okay. Are you all right, Gunner? You had a. Spell of some sort in the tavern. You've been unconscious for an hour. That's a seventeen. Yeah, he's he looks actually well. His the colour has got gotten back to his face. It just simply looks like he had been sleeping. I'm gonna straighten up his hat. Is he still a burden or and he's you've now yes. s- still burden is still yeah in front of you. Um I just realized I used the wrong accent. <laughs> that's he's, okay. He's <laughs> You, for a moment, recall the last moment before you everything went black. And you remember something happening where Malestra was once there in that room, but suddenly not. Um, I think I... Malestra is gone. Is in dead? No, more like what happened to you. You sent her to the plane of air. I don't know. Hmm. But she's gone. Forever? I, I just... I don't know yet. Can you message her? Just be like, hey, where are you? I don't know if that's a good idea. (laughs) Why? He said she's gone. We'll We'll find out whether she's dead or not. Our friend just tried scrying him and I spent the last hour saving his life. I look into the distance. (laughs) I helped. Yes, you did. A lot. We look into the distance. <laughs> you can't control me. I point out into the distance. I said, look. look. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> it's the distance. <laughs> look over there. Look at that distance. It's so distant. So. Um, I, I will actually try scrying on her again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah! Uh, ah. Sure. Go for it. Do I see him... He's already attempting to close his eyes to concentrate on doing something. Yes. Uh, well, do I, is that like a is that a verbal spell or anything like that or? I don't know. Let me check. Does that have any components? Uh, scrying is a verbal, somatic, and, and um, <laughs> material spell. Oh, yes. but but um, I have a feature called. Correct. Where is it? Which doesn't need some of these um, components. Where is it? 
something. Sure. I got something. Um, but yeah, I don't have to. I don't have to um, do anything. I shouldn't do it. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so there's no si- outward sign. Not with this one. No, I just close my eyes. Okay. No, never mind then. <clears throat> All right. So you're casting it. Yeah. Okay. Me and Thor in the meantime is just like. Yeah. <laughs> Clip that. (laughs) As you close your eyes and you cast that spell, your vision clouds again and you are suddenly not in that room anymore. The room that I was in or the room she was Yes. But you are seeing what looks to be a struggling, injured molestra. On the seabed, who is struggling to get out of what looks to be this this bed of coral that's at the very bottom of whatever ocean that she has now suddenly appeared in. You can see her breath struggling and she is, she looks like she doesn't have breath left. There's no more bubbles emanating from her mouth or her nose. And she is simply moving around desperately, looking around to see if there's any, anything that can be done. Surrounding you are fish, schools of fish that avoid her. You can see in the distance the shadow of a large, long-necked creature that simply moves away, a sea creature of some kind. And she's still there. Um, I will turn. Okay, and you are back. She's not dead yet. <sighs> I think she will be soon. How soon? Minutes. Yes. No, I want to kill her. Do you want me to bring her here? Mm, no, I don't think that would be... Oh, we should find out though, right? We should find out why. This is all very slurred as I say this. <laughs> yep. We should find out why she did the stuff. You know, like with Fraser Blue. Maybe you should. I don't know. What do you think? You're the smart one. I live in ignorance. But I think you should go back there and make sure she's dead. He didn't go anywhere. He's right here. You know what I mean. (laughs) Is this the woman with the lightning from the clouds? Yeah, the bad woman. I never met her. I don't know why she was doing that to me. Maybe you should bring (laughs) so Travago can ask questions. No, it's not that important. We can pin her down and we can (laughs) question her and I can kill her. The last time I did this, didn't end well. Yeah, you did go unconscious, that's right. You're more important than she is. Mara's sobriety hasn't improved in your <laughs> absence. Best not take her uh, advice uh, with a grain of salt at the I moment. I would like to kill her, though. That would be nice. I was really looking forward to that. <sighs> I, I didn't actually... Well, I did mean it, but... I wasn't sure if it would work. Maybe we could bring her back and then kill her. I I ignore that. (laughs) I say, whatever you've done, you've done well done. But she was one of the twelve. Did you see her die? No, not yet. Perhaps we should confirm it before we celebrate. Well, that's why if we bring her here, we can absolutely make sure that she dies. You haven't said what what is happening to her now. She's you sent her somewhere, but she's underwater somewhere. Oh, whoa! <laughs> well, um, at that I've been time, for a while here. Trivago will just shudder, <laughs> thinking of uh, what he's thought about swimming would be like for him. Rook, what do you think? Should we bring her here, or should we let her die? Quick, she's drowning. Um, I want to kill her. Oh, we don't remain silent, actually. I, I don't 
don't know if I even can do it again. I don't want you to hurt yourself, but I want her to die. She will die. Yeah, but... <laughs> I do that. <laughs> no, don't, no. You... It's fine. Don't, no, don't. <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> it's fine. Mara looks so sad. But happy. Happy sad. It's like waves of emotions. Every now and again she's like oh. <laughs> Well. <laughs> hmm. <sighs> I need some water, speaking of drowning. Um, the basin does provide water if you want it. Um, it doesn't look like nice water. Not as good as the bar water could provide. I'm going to get some bar water. No. Leave the roof. Okay. You use without another word. <clears throat> if I hear him, I will yeah, yeah. just do this. True. All right, and you leave. It's just the four of you plus Livereth and Kips. It's Livereth. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> it's, it's evening. It's evening now, right? Still about three o'clock. Three thirty. Um, I'm gonna turn to Gunner and say, I think you should take some time and rest. If you don't sleep, at least don't get into any fights or anything too much until you've had a chance to rest and eat. And, uh... How are you feeling? Just tired? No, not really. I feel... different. Did you drink any of spells last I don't know. Did I? Did you what, sorry? Did I regain any spell slots? You did, actually. Whoa! <laughs> All of them. Jeez, <gasps> my arms. Long rest. Oh, long rest. Long rest. <laughs> yeah. When I'm unconscious, I'm I just roll death saints. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awkward silence. I just. I think I. I let Hobbiton in. In a brief moment. When I reached out and I looked for her, she was in in a room and she was she was injured. But she had maybe like battle plans or something on the table. And I was just angry. And then you hear a on the door, outside. Do I, if I'm already leaving, do I see anything? As you pass, you do notice that there were two figures, one short, one tall, with hooded cloaks, passing you. They didn't seem- They're just hooded figures. Yep, yeah. they didn't seem uh, threatening or anything like no that. No big deal. You go down and um, you get those waters, which are free. I'm and gonna as stay you, down there for a bit. As you, as you do stay down there, um, you look up and you do see that those two figures are outside of room five, just being, just waiting side by side. Uh, assuming it's probably just Amara holding drinks, so I'll just open the door. Okay. So as you open the door, you see that there is, looking under this heavy cloak of the taller one, Regav Sel, this um, enchanter that you've met uh, back in Parlous Tower. And then next to him, a, just a dwarven male, bloodied, a bit pale faced, um, bright blue eyes, almost cat-like in appearance, chiseled jaw, just short beard, a little bit of that beard burnt off. Um, just nonchalantly, I'll just 
Put my head back in the room. Rook, Ragav's here and he's with some uh, chiseled jawed dwarf. Should I let him in? Don't know any chiseled dwarf. Not, not from that description, no. <laughs> Apart from maybe Tor- <laughs> Tor- uh, Taurus. He's a bit bloodied. If, the, if he's with Ragav, let them in. Hello again, sir. Come in. Oh, thank you very much. And you see that Regav almost pushes in this dwarf and they unhood themselves. And you all, apart from obviously you, Dravaga, recognize Yuk Roniant, the Archmage that you met in the Moral Holds. He does indeed look injured. He looks like his left ear is completely gone. Um, he looks like he's dried he's healed it but it's it's sort of scarred now um a recent wound you can see that his nose has been broken in several places and that his um his lip is quite bruised and you can see bulges on his neck that don't really looking at him thorum specifically you don't recognize what that wound is supposed to be but there's just these big red and purple bulges out of his neck um, and he's sort of putting his hand on one side of his neck as, as Rega brings him in and they both sit on one of the, uh, one of the beds. So I'm going to walk on over to him. I'm going to inspect just from a distance. Is he still, is he just dirty or is he wounded? Wounded. He's wounded. All right. I'm going to channel divinity, mm-hmm. preserve life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just going to dump him. The full 55. Okay. Up until he... That's it. Yeah. Unless that's all he can take. Uh, it isn't. Um, Whoa. He, he, you do see that his ear, or that, that, I guess, placement now, the ear doesn't regenerate, but the wound heals completely over now. You can see that his nose is now, um, no longer doesn't seem to be bleeding. Um, but the bulges are still there, even though they've gone a little bit more skin colored, they're still there. I'm going to get down on his level and I'm going to look him in the eye and say, there must be something important that brought you to us here. I expected to meet you leaving the army that we created for you and the demon wastes. Instead, you betrayed us, disbanded that army and weakened us all. Duke responds with his with his eyes sort of squinting towards you. How presumptuous of you. It is not that case. The armies march, and this is my reward from it, from Malestra herself. You defied her. Of course I did. She is evil. She has betrayed the Twelve and rides for Fraser Blue. She showed her true intentions. You upstart? I'm going to stand up and go say, I apologize. But there are the, but the Twelve are no more and I will use my second divinity and give them, give them the rest as much as I can. Okay. As he sort of stands up a bit more, a bit, with a bit more strength now, he continues. He says, the armies march. In secret now, because they defy the drow armies. They march out of the Moor Holds, and they make their way across Valinar towards the Demon Wastes. I number them more than 5,000 strong, fresh troops, heavily armoured, and can travel for days without rest. That is the army that I have reared. I apologize. Sincerely, you are the exception to your order. You are forgiven. Although I am still an outcast, I will be here in secret. Regav has kindly taken to uh, provide dwelling for me until I can rendezvous with my army closer to here. Oh yes, well, I, I thought I thought that he was just a little bit, I, I found him on the road and I was just a little bit uh, concerned for his health so I just thought uh, I'll just bring him in and he may, uh, 
he might be able to be of some other help to you. Uh, he may have some more information about Molestra, I don't know. I haven't really uh, talked to him much since. He wasn't able to talk maybe too much until, maybe, hopefully now. Thurum, what did you do? He, he was just pointing to his throat a lot and he was finding it difficult to speak. Yes, I healed him, but it seems not fully. What's wrong with you? Why is your throat... Well, you did well. It is a disease, simply put, that Molestra put on me. Seems like I've got something growing there, on the inside that she's put there. I'm not sure what it is, but they're moving. What? I said that out loud. <laughs> what? What do you mean they're moving? Uh, make a perception check as you sort of try and focus in a little bit more on these. Can on I these... prod one with my dragon finger? Yeah, as you see? do. Your yeah, dragon finger. As you do. So specific. Almost like a bubble. Oh no. As you push it in, it easily depresses in. And as you do, you feel like your finger goes through a little <laughs> and then touches <laughs> and then touches something solid. And wriggling. Ah. Yeah, there's something alive in your throat, Juke. That is unfortunate. <laughs> I may seek help there. <laughs> yes. Um. Oh, that's okay. I may have something to help out there. Um, I just have to go back to my shop. Incidentally, my shop is doing really well at the moment, thanks to you all. So thank you. We're making great, great sales. <laughs> he looks like, genuinely I'm excited. I'm thriving. I'm living my best life. <laughs> she was like, fuck. I got shit growing inside me. Um, can I use lesser restoration just at second level? Sure. So I'm going to touch a creature and end either one disease or one condition afflicting it. Absolutely. As you put your hand on Juke, the Archmage of House Kandarak, you see you see this audible, or you see this this movement of his chest, and you hear this audible <sighs> as these bubbles subside and become smaller and smaller and disappear. Ha, ah. ha, ah. ha, ah. and he's just going back and forth with his voice and just testing it a little bit. Ha, ah. ha, ah. that worked. I poke him in the same spot. Ow! Well, I think you've, I think you've done it, Thorum of Edo. Thank you. Not bad that was, yeah. that was amazing. Worked. How did you do that? I go. <laughs> yeah, I just keep on trying. I just try all my spells until one of them works. That's usually how I. <laughs> the divine powers. Yes. Ah. <laughs> I do not have such things. I am arcane. But thank you. No, you all, all as well. I'm flustered by his genuine thanks and the fact that it worked. <laughs> I live, and I live for you. And he gives you a, a start bow. And you as well. Be aware that the armies will fight by your side under the banner of freedom from this Fraser Blue that hinders us and casts illusions everywhere. What are your what is your next move now while I stay ready? I think it keeps changing by the minutes, uh Know your true path and <clears throat> travel it with confidence. You'll be heading towards the Eldrian reaches. Ah. Near a small town there. Do you have means of traveling there quickly? Uh, look at Ragav. Oh, yeah, me. <laughs> me, I'm, I'm helping them out. Yeah, it, it'll happen. Uh, just they need to let me know when they're ready, and yeah. That is good. Well, um. Here! And he, from behind him, he seems to have this, um, 
And this place, there's this thing that he puts his hand into. You can't quite see what it is. But as he takes his hand away, he pulls out what looks to be this quite glittery silver helmet that is filled with rubies, emeralds, uh, yellow, there's these yellow stones, uh, turquoise, and he places it on the bed next to him. Take this! This will help you and aid you in your battle to come! Thank you! What does it do? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. He looks at you a little bit interestingly. Uh, well, um, a, a relic from the holds of the Moor holds, one of their vaults, a noble who had since passed many, many times, uh, many, many years ago. If you put this helmet on, you'll be able to cast certain magical effects, and one of these gemstones will disappear. It is, has limited use, and I have not used many at all. I call it the Helm of Brilliance. Oh, there's three of them in there. <laughs> Who's the other two for? Oh no, there's four! <laughs> if he gets a six. <laughs> Fuck, we're all gonna have to the helm it. of brilliance. Uh, I was thinking this flourish was part of the his speech there. <laughs> yeah, oh, there's I, only I, five. There's only five. Uh, oh no, we all dance. <laughs> go on, let's six. go. I'm still going, so. Let's see. The helm of brilliance. Oh, do a whole train. Yeah. Let's see if we can get it. Oh. Uh, oh yay! And <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, right <laughs> we're on the around the other side. Thank you very much for the dancers. Oh, excellent! That that's uh, that was fucking terrible. That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, Excuse me while I. So, I hope this helps. What uh, magical effects does this helmet do? Can well, I... and he points to the opals. These can cast daylight. And there are five of those. He points to the six red rubies. These can cast fireball. He points to the three diamonds. These three cast the powerful prismatic spray. And then he points to uh, four orange. And these cast wall of fire. Ooh. Oof. <laughs> Oof. We like that spell. Ah, sorry, four of them. Fuck. Only the wearer can cast these spells and consider them an action, action to cast. If you wear the helmet as well, fiery effects will have little effect on you. <laughs> a small gift, but one that I hope that will be of use from House Kandarak. And with their thanks. <coughs> well, I see that this is really, really fun. Um, but are you ready to leave yet, or uh, do you still have a couple of things that you want to do? Uh, well, I think Amara's down there getting water. Uh, perhaps we should discuss with her, but uh, the original plan was to leave in the morning. Well, that that's okay. If you want to visit my shop as well, maybe, uh, were we going to meet there? I just got a little distracted when Juke suddenly turned up. I'm sorry, Lord Juke. Um, Ronnie O. Um, so... <laughs> Ronnie Art. Uh... If you want to meet out, and I can then uh, see what we have left in uh, my arsenal to then um, have um, have uh, uh, to offer again, uh, we can do that or or somewhere else. Uh, just by chance, Regov, your store wouldn't uh, be able to acquire. Uh, and I'm just trying to remember the. Items from Amara's monastery. Uh, mind steel. Yep, mind steel. Uh, 
and Astral Stone. Oh, I heard they're hard to come by. Those are those are pretty rare. Yeah, um, I may have maybe a small amount of mind steel, but that's about it. No. A small amount should suffice. Okay. Uh, I, it, it is rare, though, um, Dravago. I I probably can't part with it for free. I wouldn't expect you to, sir. I appreciate. I'll, I'll definite friends discount. Um. Uh, uh, but, yeah. And, uh, you wouldn't happen to know where someone might acquire some Astral Stone. Whoa. Uh, Again, a small amount should suffice. I can, I can find out. I, I can see if I can find out where. If you could. Uh, may, maybe by the time you come and to, to greet us again, uh, Regav's Regalia, mind you, I may be able to provide an answer. I appreciate uh, any information you could muster up, sir. Okay. Should we tell um, the Duke about Monastra? But uh, as you're doing, I would leave that decision up to you. If I should. Do you think you can handle Lestra in your current state? You're asking Duke? Yeah. Well, now that this fine gentleman has healed me, I could go another seventh rounds. Okay, well, she might have always be dead, but... Oh? What makes you say that? I did not leave her in the right state of mind, of course. That is how I got my injuries. But... I did leave her scarred. I'll pull the memory um, of, <clears throat> firstly, me seeing her in the room that she was pacing, but I'll continue to do that um, and pull out um, the memory of her underwater. And I'll try and have that as a continuous strand as I cast in code thoughts. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I'll hand it to him. Okay. He sort of gives you a quick nod and takes this. This is very powerful magic for such a young thing. And he puts it to his temple, closes his eyes for a moment, and opens it. And what are you, what are you giving him? Molester it underwater? Yeah, firstly, the state that she was in before I sent her away. Yep. And then when she was in the water. Okay. Well, this is excellent news. Perhaps Fraser Blue will be weakened by her in this current state. But I think we should definitely check first. She is a wily one, so I would, absolutely. Do you know where she is? I... Well, by your accounts, underwater. <laughs> there's, yes, there's lots of water though. Oh yes, I did not uh, particularly take stock of the coral that was around. Last time I did this, I sent someone to the plane of air. Do you think she could be in the plane of water? That is my guess. There was a lot of water around. Either that, or she was simply put in uh, deep inside an ocean. Well, with that, can you find her? I will do my best. And he dissipates the strand and turns his head slightly to the right and pushes his hand sort of away from everyone. And you see him take a couple of moments, look back at you and nod slightly. If she was in the water, she is no longer. But she hides her whereabouts from me. I'm downstairs, I ain't there. I was just staring into the space where I thought Mara was. <laughs> Is she close by? Amara? Mm -hmm. uh, can you have to see her? I would be like leaning against the bar. 
Yeah. At this point, like waiting for Orlix's brother. <laughs> he comes along. He's he's actually pretty quick to give. Well, he's the one that gives you the water. I'll wait for him. Things in here. <clears throat> it just says, um, as long as they're within 30 feet of me. Yep. Just so you can. You can. You do know where she is. She's at, at the bar downstairs, yes. She's alive. I guess as Olix's brother is approaching and I'm about to order water. What I do is go, ah! And then I say back to Gunnar in his mind, fuck. That's good news. I guess. Not really. But kind of. But not really. And that's all you hear. <laughs> So where do you think you'll go now? What other preparation do you need to do? Where's Amara? <laughs> she... Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I intend to get a good night's sleep and then set off in the morning. I have no other business. Do, do we still want to see if I can um, free the army of Undead? There's, uh, again, a lot, uh, a lot going on. Uh, whatever we do, I think we should make that decision and head straight there. Uh, it has been to tackle the Lord of Blades situation. Seems there may be an army heading there anyway. Whether they freeze or not themselves uh, is a different story. But uh, if unfreezing this army requires you to be in contact with Oberdin again, it seems to be 50-50 chance on you having a good or negative outcome from it. I'd hate to see you fall unconscious again and Kif's not being able to bring you back. Conventional methods uh, didn't seem to work. Do you have any insight on how we may bring you back if Kif's isn't available to you? I'd hate to see you put yourself in peril to achieve that. These, uh, these feats, like sending Melestra to the plane of water, they're impressive, but uh, not at the cost of your health. If we don't stop them, then I'll be no need for my health. Perhaps we should uh, confer with Amara. I'm pretty sure she was... She's taking a really long time. I really want some water. <laughs> perhaps, like perhaps I'll go check. Uh, in the state that she left here, she may have gotten lost. And uh, I'll head out to the balcony Fuck. and see if I can spot her. <laughs> Alex's brother is, is in front of you now. So I'm going to say to him, Sir, your finest water. He looks at you almost, <laughs> almost like it's a joke because you are... <laughs> Oh, uh, and he... No, like your coldest, clearest, most pure water. Oh. He takes out two glasses, fine crystal, Whoa. and spits in it. Fills, <laughs> fills it. They're already very clean. And he fills it with... He goes out the back for maybe a minute and then comes back with water that you can almost not see. And cool. you see, however, at, on the outside, you see that condensation come in. I tip him a gold piece. <laughs> uh, okay. And then I say, your brother was a good man. And I he hope is. we... Well, yes, is. Is is the right terminology. I hope we get to see him again. I'm sure you will. I'm sure Rook would like that. <laughs> um... And then, are there any napkins nearby? Or like, there are plenty. On cool, the tables, gonna, neatly folded into a triangle. I'm going to grab a napkin. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, because I assume I'm still quite, at least groggy. It's, or it's or getting inebriated. better, but you are uh, still a little woozy, yes. Cool, so in my woozy, probably sad state, 
Um, I'm gonna pull out. Um, like, I think I have a calligraphy stat. Yeah, so I'm gonna pull out um my ink mm -hmm. and a pen. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm going to look at Olix's brother and say, "Hey, you ever just like cared about someone so much that you would just do anything for them?" And then, like, had them abandon you. Well, not abandon, but just feel like shit afterwards. And then I'm not going to wait for the answer, and I'm just going to write down on a napkin. Mm -hmm. You could have said goodbye. I'm not going to sign it off. I'm just going to write that, and that's it. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to look aggressive, so the writing will be nice and incursive. Mm -hmm. um, and then mm -hmm. I'm going to... <laughs> Fold it up really neatly, as neatly as I can in this state, and I'm going to give it to him, and I'm going to say, if you could deliver this to the Church of Edo, <laughs> um, or the Temple of Edo, to um, an ex-vampire named Osei, that'd be really good. Cool, thank you. And I'm just going to, before I can, like, second guess it, just, like, walk away with these <laughs> glasses of water. Try not to spill them. As you start to walk away, you notice that Dravago is outside on the balcony starting to head down, but you notice that Amara is on her way up already. Do I be, see um, him? Yeah. I'm just going to go. Mm hmm. I'm just going to be readying that uh, little flash of genius Wi Fi signal. I can just find <laughs> off these foot feet as, as they go up the stairs. Okay. <laughs> if I look at the stairs and I still feel too woozy to climb them, can I shadow step with glasses? <laughs> yes. They're on your person, but the, but the stairs don't seem to be a hassle. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I'll just shadow step up them. They don't seem to be. They give you any issue. Um, and you walk up and you are greeted as you walk back in by Duke and um, Ray of Cell. <clears throat> you guys wearing cloaks before? Oh yeah, we were. Um, we're it's trying really to be you shouldn't do that. incognito. Yeah. Is the word I'd probably use. Um, there is a reason for it, Amara. Good to see you, by the way. Good to see you too. But also, like, just remember that there was this one time where these guys in cloaks like approached us and tried to attack us. And oh, I'd them... never attack you. Uh, I know, I... but like, who do you, you know, think we are? It kind of puts me on edge a little bit. Part of gold. Because there was this guy named Frostitch once upon a time. He was in a cloak. And oh. he stole my prophecy. And oh. it was just like a really bad time. Oh, that's, yeah. Are we not all wearing cloaks? <laughs> Travel gear. But I'm not, wearing a cloak. Not, <laughs> I am. Yeah. No, but they were wearing it up. O over and I guess more hidden all over their faces. Well... Thank you. I, I guess we'll um, we'll consider that, Amara. Uh, we certainly don't want to be attacked by the five. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, is there anything I can do to help the journey for you uh, before you go? Can I collect anything, or um, and then we can meet you back at my, my shop, or do anything for you? Jess, if there's anything you think that will help us, like, that would be good. Well, that, that's why I'd probably get you to meet me back in mine, my shop. Uh, but then on the way back there, if you need me to pick anything up for you, uh, more than happy to. Just anything that you go, wow, that feels like the five. <laughs> I'll keep my eye out. Just general food and supplies. I have yeah. To organize it with the tap and We'll computer. pay you, obviously. Oh, that's unnecessary. No, no, no. no I'm more yes. than happy to get. Okay. Uh, a number of potions of watchful, watchful rest would be appreciated. Watchful rest. Yeah, I think I may have some anyway at my shop. But Any healing that you may have. Healing potions? Healing is very imperative to me because I cannot heal myself. Okay, yeah. Um, I can get a couple of healing potions prepared. Watchful rest. Anything else? I'm finding it difficult to get to a shop myself. Uh, okay. Perhaps uh, if you can use your contacts to um, get a chunk of platinum uh, big enough to make five rings out of. Oh, that's not very much. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. We'll 
platinum, platinum coins melted down be uh, sufficient, or do you need pure platinum? That's fine. If uh, if fashioning them into the rings is no trouble, that should save me some time. But uh, just the actual material is all I truly require. Okay. Okay. How many platinum coins would you need? Enough to make five rings. <laughs> oh, this is enough to make what? what are these rings you're making? They will uh, act as components in, uh, in things that may help the party given certain situations arise. That's very cryptic. <laughs> Just components. Sounds like he's trying to propose to us. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I, fine. Probably relationship. How many platinum You'd probably say about 20 of them would make up what he's thinking of. <laughs> um, I can contribute some platinum if you would like. Who are you talking to? Regav. Oh, uh, well, I was just going to, going to get them, but... Um, I have some platinum. If your platinum is free, we'll take yours, Regav. Right no. <laughs> Rook, no. I, let, me, let me give you some platinum. How much do you need? About oh, well, if it's if it doesn't have to be pure platinum, if they can come from the platinum coins, I I just need about twenty of them. I can give you fifteen. Okay, well, 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 just give him fifteen, I guess. They don't have to exchange Are you hands. Them? I can. Random well, question: Is platinum something you? Oh, sorry. Um, I mean, you ha you gave me that spell that I can change my appearance with so here have 15 platinum coins in return i appreciate it sir you'll see they'll go to good use <clears throat> okay i appreciate it i've got some platinum if you want it as well well he would only need five now yeah i can give you five would platinum be a common building material in the gods a common what sir building material in the gods no no, platinum, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll only really see platinum coins being exchanged as coins um, in the in up in the upper districts, upper central, upper Tavix Landing places, and the Cloud District especially, just where uh, materials will cost a lot of money. Yeah, um, definitely not cogs. Cogs, uh, if if they do deal in platinum coins, you you know historically wise that it's probably for some illegal materials. Mm, okay. They don't call it the copper cops for nothing. I um, remember that I'm holding two glasses of water and, hold, and hand one to Gunnar. <laughs> oh, Gunnar, I paid for this water. How so, much? no, no, I'm not asking for money. I'm just letting you know that it is the purest water in this tavern. It is premium water. <laughs> it tastes good. <laughs> Doesn't taste like. You know how sometimes you drink water and it tastes metallic or like gross? Like platinum? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good question. Yes. Oh no, that's okay. This has been weird all night. It's question. fine. <laughs> <laughs> the cage that held the genie downstairs. Yep. What? Is that made of platinum? You don't know. It was it was a metal certainly of some kind. <laughs> I don't know if this cage. It's it's me it was metal of some kind, but you didn't get a good look at it. <clears throat> and uh, some materials downstairs that you might be easy to use. Uh, I've seemed to have uh, got enough time for what I require. But uh, Thorum, I know not much time passed uh, since we parted earlier. You didn't happen to spot any rubies or diamonds at the shops. We no, but there should be some in the chest that the king gave us. Well, then if uh, that's the case, uh, would you mind if I take one ruby and uh, potentially some diamonds for being a cleric? I can assume you know the reason. Just yes, yes, yes. I know for the platinum rings as well. Um, leave at least three hundred gold worth of diamond in case one of us die. But uh, that's. I mean, in case what. In case there's great magic needed as well. You bag holding, right? Your bag, not his bag. Yeah. I've uh, you've, bag. Well, you've still technically got Our bag. Are yours? Our bag. Our bag. Our bag. Um, <laughs> your bag with our stuff in it. Should, should we... Uh, have we taken stock of the money in there? 
Wasn't it like three and a half thousand? I don't remember. I think it was. That's that what the king gave us. Correct. Hell yeah, I'm fucking right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and how much in diamonds? Gold piece worth? The the value of them? Yeah, it was in the chest. About a thousand gold worth of diamonds. Uh, it's, it should only take the 300 for myself. There seems to be uh, enough for another couple of uh, attempts and some spare change. Uh, I'll leave that for you. You just got a, a couple of handfuls of, of sapphires and emeralds in there too. Did I ever pay that person to protect um, Pilar's Tower? Uh, Not yet. You haven't even, you haven't even visited him. You. It's gonna be fine. Dandelion? Dandelion, yeah. You haven't visited him, him yet he either. Was going to Pilot's Tower. No? Nope. Was, you're gonna meet him. Yeah. yeah. Regav, Regav was gonna, I guess, send you to him. Which we didn't. Um, I don't know if we're gonna have enough time anymore, but. I was supposed to meet your friends. Oh, the Dan! Yeah, well, if you want, um, depending on how long, would you be okay if he or maybe stayed at Pylos Tower and, and when you went back there, he'd be ready to go? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's fine. I trust him. He's not going to steal anything. Oh, I'm not worried about that, but I'd rather he actually started. Oh, yeah, I can get him started. What, what, what do you want him to, to start with? He can do some basic things to start with, uh, guards and wards and, and that sort of thing. And uh, other magical traps. Okay, um, I've got a list of... <clears throat> Just hand send, it to me and... Send a text message to you later. Okay, yeah, that's come. fine, whatever that means. But um, we, we, we'll work it out before you leave. Just hand the list to me uh, just before I send you to your lag. Okay, there is one other thing I wanted to ask. Anything you want. Um, is there a place called Mission Gardens? Mission Gardens yeah. It's a lovely place. I go there sometimes to look at the moonlight. I can't remember. I like the moon. If it was you, but someone told me to talk to someone, a goblin called Ogrex. Ogrex? Yeah, that's right. Ogrex. Uh, from House Kenneth. Okay. He was maybe able to help me with some horticulture. Okay. Does that sound right? I have no idea who this arc rack is. <clears throat> okay, you sending me mixed signals. Um, um, okay, I, I just, I really want to grow a tree. Oh. Oh. Fast. Oh, okay. Uh, do you need some help with that? Yeah. Where are you going to put it? I need a courtyard. Where? Uh, at the back of Palace Tower. <laughs> what? <laughs> On the left. I built, well, it's in the middle of being built. How did I not see this? You were pretty preoccupied. Ah. Uh. Yeah, if you want some help with that, Dan DeLion can um can also I can send him to, to help you. Okay, um a big tree. As big as you can make it. Yeah, he can do that. Are you sure you want it as big as you can make it? <clears throat> um, I don't know. Okay, well just make sure it doesn't uh, destroy your home. Well yeah, obviously not that. Uh, okay. That's I mean, fine. Could live in the tree. <laughs> tree house. <laughs> That's fine. I'll let him know to add that to the list. Okay. Thank you. That's fine. Um, so question. Yeah. yeah. No, like damn question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. Um, I know that there's an inside balcony that I was like shadow jumping to yep. earlier. Um, am I correct in understanding that there's also an outside balcony where we saw the lava? Or is that through the window? Through the window. Okay. If that's the case, you said there's three double beds in here. Yep. I'm going to take the one closest to the window. Yep. And I'm going to sit on the end of it and I'm going to look at everyone and be like, look. 
I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I'm not feeling great. So I'm going to do some meditation and maybe sleep for the next 24 hours. How long will you be meditating for? Well, as long as I can physically sit vertically. Uh, Javago, do you still need air to this shop? Uh, it seems I've got most of the materials that I require. I just need time to tinker with them now, so... Perhaps, uh, I've heard the cogs have many smithing ventures and forges that uh, might speed up this process. Uh, perhaps I could find a fellow Warforge to lend, lend a hand. If you guys get into trouble, I will be so upset with you. I'll be so upset. Amara, we're in the safest place we can be. You need not to worry. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I was at my temple. My temple. That is the safest place that I have ever known in my life. And all it took was for Thorum to say a couple of words and suddenly I'm in the dreaming dark. So don't stand there and tell me about safe. You want to go to the Lord of Blades? Don't get yourself into mischief. I doubt we'll be doing that. I'm oh, are you... Are you... Di- okay, but like, we thought we would be fine in an airship and there we were, crashing down and Drago had to fly back for fucking hours. Um, I didn't think we were going to be fine. Neither did I, but that I put that down to my paranoia around flying. Um... Well, we also had an instant way of traveling. Also wanted to save everyone's strength, which seemed to be a good idea considering we fought the celestial creature and got struck by lightning by Molestra. That was before, but you know, anyway, you might think you're going to be safe walking through the cogs, but if you remember correctly, every time we've been here, something bad has happened. We had the fight with Sedgival. We also had the orcs come out and attack us, and we had to put one of them in the lava. We also had Baiselu's lair was down here as well, so, like, you can say the cogs are as safe as you want. I don't believe you. Um, can I look out the window and see if there's any, like, forges or anything just with the inside? Yeah, sure, make a perception check as you go next to Amara and look out the other window. That's a uh, 20. Perhaps we would benefit from your company then. I don't think that's a, a good idea. I seem to feel like I'm at a constant disadvantage. I could uh, <laughs> potentially speed up your rest. Uh, you know, ten minutes. What? I'm sorry. If you'd like, if you'd like to feel restored somewhat. It's not about the restoration. It's about the fact that our goal for the last... I feel like it's been... How long has it been since we tried to pursue the Lord of Blades? <laughs> how many days has it been? Uh, it since we initially left Pylos Tower to go... To Shan. Yeah, which was... A day and was, a half. Yeah. It's been a day and a half. And we've made literally next to no progress. Um, so it's um, not speed, it is... Three planes of existence, we have, went to the it library. It is protection. <laughs> We've learned quite a lot, actually. That's great. I'm not discounting that. I'm just saying every time we now leave this room, we are in imperative danger. Okay. What would you like us to do, stay in the room, then? Well, if we would like to stick together, which we have found out is a good idea, Dravago, and... Be safe until first light, like our plan. You're the one that's all about plans here, Gunner. Then we know that Regav can get us equipment. We know that we can come back to Sean and talk to your forged. We know that we can come back and see the Temple of Edo if we need to. Let's just keep ourselves safe until first light and then go. Then go together. If you want to stop it somewhere along the way, then that's fine. But let's just... That was me drawing a box. 
that we should stay inside. I can see you feel strongly about this, and I'm scared. I can, I can make do without a full forge at my disposal. I'll Even be able tomorrow. Javari to... yes. may not have the time to create what he wishes to do if we don't do it now. Can we not do it here? It's, 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 components. it's fine, Rook. I can make do. It may take uh, slightly longer, but uh, I do see Amara's point. We get into strife if we're not together. Fine. We can go together in the morning. We'll leave literally at dawn. If we rest now, we'll be awake at like 3 or 4 in the morning. Um, and I just thought. You see two blacksmiths with Warforged from your vantage point and Gunner. Can I just ask, this is related to his question, did I not visit one of them? Yep. One of the, like, was nearby this place? Uh, not in, within eyesight of what you see out the window, but there were there was a, a, um, a little ways off though. Okay. But you, do, you see two blacksmiths, one a bit larger than another. Um, one that's probably taking up about five meters of the, of basically adjacent to the stream of lava. And he, with this particular warforge is actually using this lava as uh, aid. Um, another one looks like more of a traveling blacksmith who seems to be, the, the, the warforge is actually a much more, uh, heavily built with metal as though he's got baskets like metallic baskets and and, and placements to put his tools um, and he's sort of walking on all fours and moving around while selling his wares um, yeah I'll look at them longingly and then <laughs> go to the corner of the room uh, and yeah I'll start to tinker with things um, but uh yeah, I'll let everyone else. I want to make it very clear. I did not say that you couldn't go. I'm just saying to be careful. Very careful. I've already left the room. <laughs> Where are you going? I left the room after you. So good. Cool. cool. Well, I stroppily go into my fucking meditation then. Okay. I go to sleep in one of those other three beds. <laughs> yep. Uh, if you've already gone into meditation, mm-hmm. I'll stay in the corner of the room for now. Um, Can I have at all? Uh, are you skilled with metalwork? No, but maybe you could show me help. If you'd like to, uh, like to learn some things, I can, uh, start with, uh, I was going to try and melt down these platinum coins and turn them into rings. I'll pull out um, smithing tools and jewelers tools, mm-hmm. um, and I can uh, I can heat this metal. And uh, as an example, I'll um, sort of uh, hold the coins, try put some pressure on them, and cast heat metal to make them malleable. Mm-hmm. As you watch, gonna the metal starts to glow. And you can feel that whoosh on your face as this this fiery mess of material starts to be able to be molded and melded immediately, almost instantly. Uh, and while it's uh, glowing, uh, I'll pull out the smithing tools and jewelers kits, and uh, in there there should be uh, a mold. For a ring, just simple, round, nothing uh, fancy on it, mm-hmm. and I'll uh, manipulate the the metal into the molds, um, compress it in, and then pull the mold off and leave them to slightly cool, so there'll be five rings going. Yep. Do you have to hit them? Uh, not not for these. The mold shapes the metal. For this, uh, if I was making weapons or blades, then yes, a hammer would uh, hammer would be required. And um, while the rings are slightly cooled, but still um, still a bit soft, I'll pull out the jeweler's tools and um, start to customize each ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, so having 
uh, taken note of all the artworks and imagery in Amara's uh, monastery. Uh, one ring will start to um, etch in some of those images mm-hmm. uh, around the band uh, for Thorin's ring. Uh, hoping that this isn't a slight at him. Uh, there'll be a, uh, a, a very defined dragon head mm-hmm. and then two dragon heads that's uh, sort of come around the ring uh, that will be sort of thin aligned uh, like his um, medallion that has two heads missing and I've noticed that the other members have the three yep uh, again hoping that that's not a slight to him <laughs> uh, gonna <laughs> your ring uh, and I'll explain as I'm going uh, and your ring will have uh, a book that I've noticed you writing me in the brief period that I've been spending with you. And uh, around the band, I'll start to mold in some eyes to match your cloak that you've been wearing. Can I make a request? Uh, if it's doable, I'm happy to accommodate. Can you, instead of the book and the eyes, can you put kips around the ring? Is, uh, is he able to uh, act as a muse for me? Give me an image. Kips. An image to, uh... Oh, he looks like this. <laughs> Kips comes out of your cloak and, uh, Gunner, and just sits around your shoulders. And you can see a still form now. It's just this very thin this trail of smoke uh, and this these calming eyes looking at you and your work as well. And, uh, Kips, which is your better side? Which would you prefer me to capture? His head actually tilts straight towards you and down slightly, as though giving you sort of a giving you sort of a, a, a downward gaze while his eyes still look directly. Uh, so while well, I've got something to look at, uh, I'm going to attempt to do this really well. Yep. Uh, do I need to roll for anything? No, that's fine. You, you've you've done this sort of thing before. Uh, so then you're in uh, Gunner. It's We'll have kips on it. And uh, for Rook's ring, um, i sort of been a bit interested in the gods uh, since uh, coming to Eberron, and uh, Rook has mentioned Onatar a couple of times, so uh, I believe there was a smithing hammer and... Ooh, I forget what the other symbol was. Uh, crossed as an Onatar symbol. Onatar is crossed with the, uh, the pincer. That's it. The, the, the tongs. Uh, the forceps, uh, yep. which I'm familiar with being uh, having smithing tools of my own. So that will be um, on part of the ring. And uh, around the band, there'll be an arrow uh, just symbolizing his mm-hmm. ranger hood. It's fucking cute. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the final ring uh, I'll be making for myself. Uh, and that will have a similar looking to the kit's ring mm-hmm. uh, except it will be of a dragon or a boris uh, so a long dragon that will be biting its own tail okay um and uh yeah i'll just be making that in front of you is that one yours yes what is it uh this is the the shape of the the sculpture that uh i was pushed through as a portal in sigil to get me here I did not know it was a portal at the time, but it was a sculpture that uh, my mother had made and hung on our workshop wall. And uh, in her state, uh, distraught state, um, she said all goodbye to me and pushed me into this uh, into this sculpture. And uh, that's when I realised it was a portal, and it sent me here. You were pushed. Uh, I was fleeing, or been made to flee from the uh, Lady of Pain. I seem to have uh, stumbled across something she did not want me to see, and uh, I've seen the aftermath of her her wrath on the streets, and it's not pretty. And uh, I believe I was pushed through the portal to save me from her. What about your mother? Is she safe? It's not the, the Lady's M.O to take her wrath out on uh, any citizen, just uh, ones that slight her. I 
don't, don't know exactly it. how I slighted her. Everyone but, please uh, hydrate. It seems that I've My empty gained her ire there. and uh, may never be able to return to Sigil. <laughs> Um, just to clarify as well. Just and the to, second time, please. Oh, wow. Thank okay, you very much. That's um, not me because I have nothing left. How many rings were you making in total? Uh, so that was five. One for each? Yes. Did you, just because I might have missed it, did you describe them? Were you doing something from a... Uh, yes, from from temple. The, the, the temple, that's right. You did. You did. Uh, you did. The perception. Yes, yes, yes. With the, temp, with the, what was on the table. Thank you. Just need to reminding. All right. Cool. Mm. Sorry, as you were. <laughs> how I was. Uh, yeah, so with that being done, uh, the rings are sort of set aside to, to cool and okay. temper. What is it for? If we're all wearing these rings, uh, I will be able to have myself to, to someone and uh, mitigate incoming uh, damage and effects. So she'll give give the person uh, that I cast a spell on a lot of protection, but uh, it will I will take the effect of their damage as well. Um, I just wonder if I want that. It's uh, it's fine. I'm. Could everyone pre- also stretch at Aeon Cross? And stretch as well, yes. Thank you very much. It's a good oh. idea. I feel so oh. nice. Oh. oh, yeah. Just hunch like this all night. Uh, if, if the concern is for me taking the damage, uh, I will hopefully be able to mitigate it. Uh, particularly now that I have a ruby, I might be able to fashion something that will be beneficial for this. <clears throat> Good stretch. He's gone. He's not even here. No, no, I just wanted to look at him because everyone else did. <laughs> Come on. It's nice. I like it. I'm glad you do. Do I, I have to attune to it? No. Okay. <laughs> I have a sneaking suspicion that uh, Thorum might be able to make use of this as well. It's uh, a skill I've heard. Uh, Clerics can use. But yeah. Thorum's not a cleric. Are you not? Yeah, so that's why I haven't used this <laughs> up until now. It would have been very useful in some of our previous adventures, but you know. If I die because you die, then who will bring you back to life? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking savage! Logic. <laughs> no, I'm just being <laughs> Well, that, that looks really good, by the way. Oh, he's still here. <laughs> he's just been watching. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but um, I'm watching your skill. Very impressive. I appreciate the uh, the compliments, sir. I, uh, from what the party have told me, you're quite skilled yourself. Uh, one of Thank the you. trades I considered um, when I was first made uh, was the alchemy trade, but I chose a different path. Well, and he makes some good potions. That I do. Um, just bear in mind that um, if you ever were interested, after obviously you save the world, <laughs> uh, if you ever want to have a job, um, co- <laughs> come, co- come and have a chat to me because I, I may be able to provide you with, with something. Yeah. Well paid. The need for income arise, I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. But uh, first we've got to ensure there is a world for me to uh, come to your shop in. That is very true. Um, well, uh, Juke and I will uh, depart uh, and, and we will see you hopefully in the morning. And he gives you all a, a bit of a nod even towards those sleeping or meditating and backs out with Juke. Without another word, simply looking at you all a bit just with a serious tone in his eyes and they turn and the hoods go back onto their heads and they walk out closing the door behind them gently 
as so not to disturb the sleep. And are you doing anything else before? Uh, yeah. How long did that whole thing go on for? It it probably took. A, 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 well, it will have taken a couple of hours, probably only a couple of hours, but. Uh yeah, we'll see. Um, maybe it's, afternoon, yeah. it's it's coming up to about five p.m. five to six. Uh, well, maybe evening. Else, everyone else is caught up with their couple of hours. So come back to. Amara, you probably have finished that meditation, but are now sleeping. Is that right? Yeah, I would. Thorin was also that sleeping. Meditation. I would have after everything that's kind of happened today. I would try and just meditate for as long as I could physically stand it before mm -hmm. I needed to sleep. Okay. Rook, did you go anywhere in particular? Where were where you uh -huh. heading at, as you exited? Um, yeah, I sort of went downstairs. Um, sat down at the window, just looking out into the street uh, where Penelope is. Mm -hmm. And um, just probably chill out there for a little bit okay. um, while I'm contemplating the next moves and what um, to potentially do about on the top. Okay. All right. And you are visited um, frequently to make sure you have your drinks that you need and the food that you need, mm -hmm. and it's to see if you're comfortable. But otherwise, you are left alone. No patrons come up to you. Um, fawn over you or anything like that they oh, hey. seem to treat you with a bit of respect and, and stay their distance yeah and some look over to you and see see what you're doing but otherwise leave you alone all right and as you rest anyone else want to do anything else uh yeah if i've still got a bit of time mm -hmm. um i'll just still be tinkering away in the corner um i'll Grab the ruby that I got from the king's chest, and just with the jeweler's tools, um, if you remember a couple, two, three sessions ago, uh, melted some gold coins to make a the base of a pendant of two hands, clasped like that, holding up. And I'm going to try and fashion that ruby to fit into those two hands. Yep. And um, also to have the typical kind of like cartoon heart shape uh, at the top for two. Sort of yep. Up dubs and yep. um, yeah, I'll spend whatever time's necessary to. Okay. Are you creating facets in the ruby as well, or keeping it natural? Uh, yeah, kind of natural. It's okay. um, just to get that shape and to make sure that it fits into the pendant. Okay. And and it does so. Um, again, it takes probably about a couple of hours to do that as well. So you're doing a bit more fine work. Uh, so about the same sort of difficulty as those rings. Um, and is that, yep, yeah, that's, that it's, it is done by the time probably 8 p.m. comes around. Uh, I'll just take stock of the room, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of sleep, uh, just maybe pop my head out in the balcony to see what Rook's up to. Yeah, Rook is just gazing out the front of the Five's Rest, uh, out into the street, just looking like it's contemplating next moves, contemplating the day to come and what challenges would await him and you all. Uh, having seen that everyone's safe, um, being in the cogs, there's nowhere to look up into the, the night sky, I would assume? Not at all. It's all, as you look up, you see this rocky ceiling that is thick and natural. There's no, there's no, um, mosaics there's no pattern or art to it at all it's uh roughly hewn out and and uh just holding up the rest of sean and uh, then i'll move into a corner if there's a chair or anything like that um try keep the door and the window in vision mm -hmm. uh, and then go into actually clasp that um that pendant that i've just made yep and then go into um the shutdown mode but I'll be aware, keeping an eye on the entrances. Okay. All right. So as Dravago then becomes a bit more dormant and you all are either resting or just keeping an eye on things. We're waiting the next day, awaiting 
the last few tasks before Yerlag and potentially the Demon Wastes. We're going to leave it there for tonight. That's us. Excellent. Oh man, it was so nice to be in the same room. <laughs> so nice to be in the same room. You can actually talk to each other. It's and great. not like awkwardly, like I know. whenever like <laughs> someone... There was like a whole, I think there's a whole discussion that Rook and Gunner had. (laughs) And it was like, they're just both like. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, over the top. (laughs) It is a pain. That was my internet, I think. Yeah, you were very late that time. There was a a bit of jumpiness, but that that happens within. There's like a million devices around. Yeah, it happens. Stop making excuses and just be better. (laughs) Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And um, if you're watching a bit after our live stream, um, uh, which, I, which I know a lot of you are. Um, I just want to give you all a shout out. Um, thank you so, so much for uh, watching us after the fact. Um, yeah. it, it really is like a, such a nice, special feeling when I wake up and I see so many people um, That's wild. catching up uh, on, on what's going on. So look, even if you um, go onto our Twitter, please make yourself known to us. I'd, I'd love to connect with people who are watching and are not on live as well yeah um please talk to us yeah just just say hi i, I just um what? if i do need yeah. to give a quick shout please. out um because he said he would watch this so kendall drury if you tune into this episode hello can't wait for you to dm rook right and yeah. can't wait to play with you yes it'd be awesome really exciting um all right well Providing nothing else happens untoward next for over the next week, we will see everybody back here live, all together, um, on a Tuesday night for once, <laughs> like tonight. But thank you, everybody, and have a lovely evening. Just